pretty sure it just doesn't exist. <laughs> like specifically <laughs> doesn't. It's I mean it's not in, it's not literally impossible if there are elves on Dark Sun and there is metal on Dark Sun. <clears throat> so you're saying Hello, there's a chance. Welcome. Hello, welcome to Mysteries of Athos. Uh, we are, this is an AD&D stream. We've got a party of, um, loosely let's call them heroes, traveling around the, the burnt world of Athos, uh, who have just finished a long, well, it's not really a detour, it's a job, I guess, a job in a fairly pleasant but quite dangerous box canyon, which actually had surface water. Everyone was very... Um, moved by the experience but now they're finished they've made friends with lots of people they have lost several of their friends to being killed because they're bad at playing D&D and now they're gonna get back to the main road and travel to the city of Barlick we've got might have got some players on the way but uh, we will let them join as and when um, because we're again because we're not on normal schedule because of uh, Everyone having Celtic schedules. Uh, Simon's Simon, who plays Ben Tusi, the dwarven cleric, is coming from a Pathfinder game, and we may have uh, Garrus the Gladiator as well. Which is the game we'll be playing <laughs> after Dark Sun. We'll be starting the Pathfinder Two campaign. Um, oh god! Oh, <laughs> Please not. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. The thing is, Alex and I are not excited for opposite reasons. Yeah. Alex is like, Ah, oh, it's not as pure as Pathfinder One. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, mm, you're saying you want me to play a D20 system, optionally, <laughs> like by choice. <laughs> uh, yeah, Asher the Bard. Um, it's just as he's not online, I assume he's definitely not coming. But uh, yeah, Asher the Bard does live down down the road from me in real life. So maybe uh, next time I'll go and knock for him, like a twelve year old. <laughs> Can Andrew come out and play? <laughs> Can, can he stay that in and play? Stay, really? stay in and play. Stay in yeah. and play. <laughs> no, his parents find place? it funny. Yeah. Uh, we could just have like a tin can telephone for the communication. This is part of the problem is that Andrew doesn't really like communicating. <laughs> I don't know how to put it. He just, yeah. Uh, online, it, it, ironically, online communication is not particularly uh, desirable for him. So. It scares his lizards. Yeah, he is, he is a man. He's the lizard man. Not in like a murdery way. I don't mean like that's his nom de plume. Well, it's all of his nom de plume. Oh, yeah, yeah. But I mean, as a serial killer, it's not his nom de plume. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, it may be, I don't know, maybe it may be amongst the, uh, the serial killer community. Oh, uh, on which note, yeah, Sa Sa Sandman Season 1 was a pretty reasonably faithful adaptation. I recommend it. It's been a long time since we uh, saw this map. It wasn't. It wasn't. Yeah, hard. you've been in the uh, box scan for. Mm -hmm. Wasn't. 100%. It wasn't. A, no, I mean it doesn't have to be a hundred percent. It doesn't have to no. be a hundred percent. But I thought it was. It was pretty good. It was my opinion. Yeah, compared to a lot of adaptations. I am a cynical yeah. media consumer, and I thought it was pretty good. I also, but I didn't yeah. read. I didn't read the graphic <laughs> novel, so. Um, yeah. So I, yeah, I it cannot speak to yeah. its adaptability, but on its, the, official on its opinion, merits, the official opinion of a group of cynics is exactly right. Yeah, yeah, it was good. Uh, yeah, yeah. Some, some I, I hear the same about Picard season three. I am wondering about whether I just skip all the all the parts of season one I haven't watched, all of season two, and just start Picard on season three. Yeah, because I think so. I like honestly, I don't. Think I, I, I sorry, I like anything. characters. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I was listening to, and I've actually heard this from people like from across the media political spectrum. Um, you know, because people are predisposed one way or another on these things, right? But people are like, yeah, people, the first two seasons weren't good, now it's good. And I'm like, so people who hate each other and would uh, would definitely burn each other's DVD collections agree that probably is a good sign. Yeah, I think I just had I a conversation with someone about that because uh, about this just the other just the other day. Um, yeah, it's it's yeah. okay. It's okay. Another glowing review from me. It's, it's pretty yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, this is me. These are Beej's favorite two shows oh. the last ten years. <laughs> <laughs> it's like well, it. It feels more like a Star Trek movie than a than a classic Star mm. Trek show. Like yeah. the recent Star yeah. Trek movies, or well, <laughs> no, like a classic Star Trek, <laughs> <laughs> like an okay one. But it's, it has a more of a, that feel to it than 
them than the shows. Or well, all that you need to know about the the rebooted Star Trek was that J.J. Abrams argued his case as director by saying, "I never liked Star Trek, so I'm a good person to adapt it for people who don't watch it." <laughs> <laughs> That's literally a thing he said. Not, he's not wrong. And Alex Kurtzman had never. Yeah, yeah, you probably are. That is the audience you're going for, J.J. <laughs> well. The, the reason why this season is good is because Kurtzman had to step away, right? He, mm. Like officially, yeah. he's not—he was yeah. not involved in this season. But what a coincidence yeah, yeah. that suddenly and it's okay again. It was good. Well, and the guy running it, Terry Metalis, ha- worked on Deep Space Nine, Voyager, and Enterprise as like a, as a, like an eighteen-year-old. As mm-hmm. a book, he, well, not literally, not all of those are eighteen-year-old, but he became an intern and then a production, and then like the production managerial assistant to Brandon Braga, I think. So you're like you're talking about someone who actually was involved in Old School Trek and liked it, <laughs> which does matter, I think. Um, on which note, yeah, I've been getting into Traveller, so maybe we should actually, maybe our next People Are Away for a Month game should be uh, Traveller. Ooh. Have not played. But but we um, start, like, have you, character yeah. creation on stream. Yeah, well, no, yeah we do character creation on stream, yeah. Because that yeah. would be, that's its own, like, mini game, right? Yeah. Yeah. It also, if you do basic character creation, it doesn't take that long. It probably takes less than AD&D. Uh, there's options. Hmm. You can use supplements to do advanced. Okay. Anyway, um, should, I don't know. Should I leave this music on? This is nice music, but you're about, to, you're about to leave on you. So let's... What about... Endless Voyage sounds like a good tune for you getting stuck in the desert and dying. Oh, here's music on now. Well, yeah, I was not hearing the forest, but I hear this one. Well, we, we know our route, so we don't really have to decide much there. Yeah. Yeah, we're just continuing yeah. kind of through and around the mountains, aren't we? Yeah, I guess we're... Uh, yeah. Yeah, hopefully, is there space between the mountains and the Silt Sea? It's hard to see on this map if there's like... Yes. Um, oh, I, th- I think it's actually... The, I think there's space either side. Like, you're north of that Silt Lake, which mm-hmm. is the way you came in and up to um, the Box Canyon. And then I think, and there is one on the outside too. Like obviously the fact it's mock isometric kind of hurts that. Mm-hmm. Like I expect it. It's meant to give a scale as if you were seeing the, mount- the mountains from um, 45 degrees, which is not actually helpful. Yeah, that's good. Uh, I just yeah. didn't want to have to walk directly through the middle of the mountains, so. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Well, I mean, this is good. We have a place to stop on the way home. Um, I think it's been overall yeah. success. Let's let's sell our chain finally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This qu- great question is all about selling rusty chain from an ancient uh, ruined city. <laughs> but yeah, because you're based at Fort Sisra, as and that is your yeah. your merchant house, uh, which is right out in the middle of nowhere, but uh, at the edge of nowhere. But the idea is it's it's not, it's not badly located for ruins, which I think was the gimmick. Was that why don't you go and loot ruins and sell stuff from pre pre red sun because legends say that uh and you've seen pictures of these legends actually haven't you you've seen cave paintings mm. of uh, a time where there were there was a, a blue and then a yellow sun and the world was green and the silt sea was full of water um you know ridiculous obviously but uh yeah <laughs> mm-hmm. well are what you is, is the is the general understanding of the population that like it's always been this way. I thought. I thought in general people knew that this was like a post, like something happened in the past, to make the world this bad. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think uh, everyone has an opinion on that, <laughs> more or less. As and I think, if you were to say to people, I saw a cave painting with a blue sun and like water everywhere, like it being almost a water world with kind of like blocks mm-hmm. of fertile land, people would probably think that was too much. I think the idea that once upon a time there may have been different things. People, the artifacts, like these are big Mesopotamian trading cities. They see stuff. The idea there was probably a different world. The elves, who do a lot of trading just outside cities, they obviously travel the deserts and barrens and come to cities. The elves certainly do say that things were different once. Um, I think different sorcerer kings have different opinions about whether or not that's true. <laughs> I suspect the sorcerer kings know what actually <laughs> happened. Have... Yeah. Yeah, I, and as they do know what happened, you, sh- you can trust them. Uh-huh. <laughs> Certainly, um, this is one of those times where, <laughs> in a setting like this, it's like, man, it sucks that we don't have, like, 
a camera that we could take a picture of that <laughs> of that cave wall. Yeah, I think did someone make a, a drawing with charcoal? Possibly, I think there was some like attempt <clears throat> to. I think I might have attempted to do something, but I don't have. I'm not very skilled, so it's probably very rough. Just, just to like yeah, remind us. Yeah, literally a. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, the, it, it, you you found it impossible to damage because you touched it and nothing came off. Like, and I think that, and that's what the um, the other f people said as well. The rat people you've made friends with, mm -hmm. they were also like, "Yeah, it doesn't seem." So hey, uh, it ha you need to seriously undermine that entire uh, rock formation probably to get rid of it. <laughs> so we could just chip uh, it off the wall, bring it with us. <laughs> so he tells yeah. me it's not going to come in one piece. Yeah. Yeah. We'll we'll find some yeah, quarries. Uh, come come back. I recently did a uh, fossil hunt with my kids. We did like an uh, education day at the beach um, up here in near Alex and me. And um, yeah, it turns out like even on the one beach, there are like there are stones that are quite easy to get really good ammonites out of, and then others which are basically just compressed mud. That's like yeah, basically you just have to like glue it all back together. You chip it all out and then glue it all back together. And like yeah. <laughs> I think the friable rock behind the uh, the waterfall might fall into the latter. It might be a sedimentary uh, type. Uh, on a on a note to what you were saying, to what yeah. Alex is a little joke, but in all seriousness, we we should. Do you guys agree that we should um, keep the existence of the box canyon as secret as possible? Absolutely, like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, at don't, least don't tell at anyone least. else. For the time being, until we have helped, you know, the wonderful people who live here catch up to the rest of civilization. Yeah. Uh, who's this? Ah, uh, hello. Ah, uh, hello. We're just deciding on our route onward to Balik. That is uh, where we're at. I should join the stream, shouldn't I? Because then people will be able to see me. Ah, uh, well, that no. depends on roll twenty, really. But, uh... <laughs> it hasn't worked in weeks. But I'll join anyway because um, it's just going to throw dice. <clears throat> Did you get four or five feats tonight? Ah, uh, I don't even read my feats because there's just too much other stuff going on in that game. So I have feats, <laughs> but I don't pay any attention to them whatsoever because I've got like 50 spells on my spell list and I'm level five. That's, <laughs> that's ridiculous. Um, we were fighting trolls and we were jumped by a troll that's not weak to fire. Oh, no. <laughs> no, that's what I thought. I was like, oh. Oh no! <laughs> um, but we survived, so. Yeah. Well, we haven't really started. We're just we're just setting out from the canyon. Uh, we kind of already know our route, so uh, there's not a lot for us to decide. A game that so could not be go. further from Pathfinder. <laughs> yeah. In this game, you have no spells. In this game, you can die. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> In real life, it's like it's like you know, there's that. That game in Consider Phlebas by Ian M. Banks, where yeah. the chips people have are people. That's this game, and I'm the player, and you're the chips. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so what what were we saying before? Oh uh, yeah, keep keep the existence of the box. Yeah, keep it secret. Yeah, keep it secret. Keep it safe. Yeah, keep it safe. And then yeah. you know, try and help them catch up to civilization, so they don't just get like invaded by Bali. Yeah. Well, also, just because, like, the existence of a source of fresh water along our route, like, I don't want other people going in and, like, exploiting <laughs> that. That's that's for us to exploit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. It's not as uh, benevolent as it, as it sounded. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't, I don't know your current main PC's uh, alignments, because, obviously, yeah, you might have... I don't, I don't think any of you are evil, but... No. no. For, by memory, but, like, uh... No, I'm yeah, obviously you'll have different views on on this matter. Matter. Yeah, well, I I agree on the like benevolent part of it as well as like these two groups have agreed to be our allies, so we should be we should act mm -hmm. good back to them and <laughs> and telling the wider world, hey, there's this thing here that you might be interested in. I even though it's kind of in the middle of nowhere, I just would hate for like other groups to suddenly start poking their noses in and messing things up there. So yeah, let's. You're, you're in a fa it's a fairly isolated place. At least there's the only people who regularly come this way are elves. So I guess there's that advantage. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, great. 
uh, how many? Okay, it's two days per square without actually, get, generally speaking. Is there a difference between Sandy Waste and is that barren? This is something that oh, I had actually learned, but then we haven't yeah, done and loads of overland travel in ages, so I've got to go. And, but yeah, I'm, so you're going to be changing. Table. You're going to be changing movement rate. Basically, is the thing. Yeah, I think sandy waste is what my survival is in. Actually, uh, let's see. Which you're, Open you're, you've currently. You've current, yeah. Here we go. Terrain costs. Sandy stony barrens are two movement cost. Sandy wastes are three. Sandy. Oh, uh, so you're quick, rocky you're quicker over stony barrens then. Yeah. But then mountain, the sand mountain, is like um, really annoying to travel but, across. It's, yeah, Not I'll just double check the terrain on a on the the map in the in the box. Yeah, because yeah, you have been on. Well, you're actually currently a mountain, but I'd like is it as yeah, yeah, which is but you're not actually up in mountains. So I was giving you a sort of like yeah, sandy. I was letting you continue on sandy waste as you came through the foothills. Um, because I think the conclusion was it'd be quicker to go. Oh no, I think I maybe made it four, didn't I? I made the rate four, but like sat going south of the big. Silt Lake would have been quicker on land, but would have just taken longer. I think was the was the the concern. Quicker as a crow flies, or the vulture flies. I guess they probably say on Dark Sun, but um, yeah. yeah. Just a man eating yeah, west fifty of... foot wooden span cadaverous <laughs> vulture. <laughs> yeah. With many yeah, west of you is Stony Barrens, as in it goes back into full sandy waste, Stony Barren, and then kind of go, yeah, you then hit um, an area of fertile land, don't you, pretty much? Uh, I think that is. Is that at the tip um, of the, the inlet here? Yeah, and then you come round onto, that's actually, oh, it's also the kind of technically foothills of, um, it's not a uh, verdant belt proper. Uh, but yeah, there's something there, and then you go. You can go south of those mountains or north of them, and then east to Barlick, and through Barlick it's on road through Stony Barrens, uh, Verdant Belt, and mm, there's another type. What is that third type? I can't even tell what that is. Um, yeah, but yeah, uh, then into Verdant Belt at Barlick. Basically, it's through mo mostly Sandy Waste and Verdant Belt on a road. This road does look like there's a road to nowhere. It just sort of like peters out. Yeah, uh, there are. Yeah, you you get uh, caravans coming up to Barlick there from you know exploring bits of the desert, trading with tribes. Obviously, it is a way to get south of the mountains, but not many people need to go south of the mountains. All right, so shall we just uh, teleport to Balak? Let's just <laughs> let's just say we've tra traveled. Yeah, yeah the we'll, way. Just, we'll just fast travel. travel. We'll just hand wave all of the encounter rolls. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, to fast travel, you have to have a checkpoint in the uh, in the city at the. Oh, uh, that's right. Yeah, we so. haven't been there yet. Okay. <laughs> has anyone has anyone unlocked it on their map yet? <laughs> like backstory. <laughs> I'm from I'm from Balak. Okay. Didn't you know in my backstory? <laughs> yeah. That 27-page um, okay, document so I sent you four get... months ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's in there. 27-page yeah. backstories do not get read. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, actually, they get you anti-experience points for every page of backstory. You start at minus 500 XP. But, but I want to play Old Man Henderson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, Bees, do you want to start our rolling? It's a D6, I guess, as you your daytime is your... By the way, did Tom, do you have the um, transportation sorted out and food and um, water? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, how many of us are there again? Uh, uh, I mean, currently there's four plus Zedric, so five. Okay. Ooh. And how many kanks do we have at the moment? Is it still two? Two. Yeah, is is it? Yeah, it's uh, isn't it Marcia's kank? Dead Mar, uh, not dead Marcia. Sorry, dead. No, uh, what was the evil Templar? Yeah, well, uh, yeah, there's Sidira. dead Sidira and dead. Oh, um, Phil's. What was Phil's? No, uh, Andrew's other character. No, no, Va Varys didn't have a kank. No, oh, um, yeah, and, Andrew's, Andrews. Andrews evil Templar who had like oh, torture as ability. Something wasn't it? 
Yeah, Maeve. Maeve, that was it. Maeve. Yeah, Maeve. Maeve had yes. a kank. I think one, one of the kanks yeah. was eaten. One of the kanks you salvaged. And then you got the other kank you were given by uh, Andrew Cicera. Cis yeah. So yeah. Am, I, am I ready to take got rations two kanks. off for tonight then? Has anyone got water survival or whatever? I take the rations uh, off. If, I um, think I do. Let me check. Um... So who do we have? Uh, Kent, we have Garrus, Oh, yeah, he we have... Yeah. Wait, we don't have Garrus. Kent, Gargi, Bentusi, yeah. Gargi. Do halflings need the same amount of water? <coughs> do I need half as much? I assume might require... I mean, they are... I th no, it does just say the, the same amount. It's because they sweat so much. Yeah. <laughs> so everyone's... Through their feet. Everyone's no, nobody's got like water resistance or anything like that. I've I've got I've got heat protection. Let me okay, roll it. Do you want to roll it? Uh, that's a fail. That's a fail. Okay, so five, <laughs> five, five, five water. Fine. I do have water finding. If we happen to actually ha water finding, doesn't that just let you find a little bit of water every day? Uh, let me check. Yeah, that. Let me check. Uh, water find. Uh, find water efficiency. Only use once a day. Takes an hour. Only move half as far as normal. Found sufficient water to sustain himself for one day. Not enough to rehydrate, but will not further dehydrate. Um, so yeah, you can find it like a little bit of water. I guess I, there's no harm in my, me trying. I guess like near the end of the day, I go for a, a bit of a wander after we set up camp. Uh, I've got Is that, do you need to make a proficiency check for that? Or yeah, not? yeah. Do you need yeah, to make yeah. a proficiency check for that? Or yeah. Yeah, it's fine. Well, it's a proficiency, so I assume so. Oh, that's just a success. Hmm. So you find some water. Yeah, find find, find a, a gallon for myself. Where'd you get that? Oh, it's just for me. Don't worry about it. Um, you, well, you, can, <laughs> you, you can you can have the dirty water, and I'll have a clean stuff. You know? for, <laughs> for the purpose, so I, I think so the water that you're going to find random in the desert is pretty spried dirty. Um, for the purposes of the inevitable encounter that happens. Uh, I'll just say that while we're traveling on the, well, on the road or whatever, while we're traveling, uh, Marcia will be, we'll say like 50 feet ahead of the caravan, just to, mm -hmm. uh, and I believe uh, your dexterity reaction adjustment is makes you less likely to be surprised, right? Is that what it's for? It does, yes. Okay. It does, yes. So This was relevant recently in a game I played. I'm trying to remember what it was. I'm trying to remember which game I, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Where like that some disastrous surprise was actually prevented by uh, by that. So I'll do. The I think no, it was last time. It was, it was Marcia last time. Marcia was surprised by the Mysterials, modified into not surprise. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you won the day because of Marcia. And well, I will attempt to do it again and do the job of the scout by scouting while we travel. Yep, I can. I can put. Uh, I'll, yeah, I'll put. I'll roll a move silently for you. I guess if that's what you're expecting. Um, um I was I was mostly head. just expecting to notice things before they get too close to the caravan. Before, yeah, yeah, okay, that's fine. Cuz I if I'm not yeah, if I'm not too far away from the caravan, I'm not sure how much stealth will help cuz the caravan's not very stealthy. Because the caravan's there, yeah, yeah. No, that's fine. Um okay. Uh Tom, could you roll for the nighttime? Yep. The 6. We don't have dice cam spots by Budweiser. Do, no, do, we, do you have do you have your camera on Tom? Actually, yeah, I can. Oh, that's one a shame. Sec. No, because you could get dice cam sponsored by Budweiser. Uh, might as well, eh? Since we gave up on webcams, since uh, Roll Twenty officially died, basically yeah, stopped yeah. working for webcams. I occasionally, randomly, like if Alex and I both have had them set up, I didn't have it on today, but like I think I occasionally see Alex and no one else, and that's basically what happens. What? Uh... Probably. <laughs> Yeah, I only see Alex on the cams. That's oh. why I just... I, I, I only see Alex on the cams. I don't see anyone except my yeah. cam. It's stupid, but you should be able to see dice cam on the stream. So, what dice am I rolling? I own D6? D6, yeah, yeah. What's the result? The result is... A four. Form. I actually can see dice cam, but it's it's like the box within a box within a box on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, it's, <laughs> YouTube Studio. It's so rather I, quite. I, small. I cannot see it. 
and then authors yeah, delayed. I think it'd be bit. okay if I had it up on screen. Yeah. yeah if it's on roll twenty, I'd be. If you don't it, believe my yeah. dice rolls. Yeah. 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 There's about four pixels Alex and I of play with life. a friend who, uh, <laughs> we, yeah, we, we we have Alex and I have a friend we play with who we uh, are basically constantly rinse over the fact we need to like double check his dice, needs to put them out under the table. <laughs> um, over this, it's partly funny because it really winds him up. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be an R slash D and D story, isn't it? <laughs> My DM and his friends keep accusing me of cheating. Um, I mean, I've already got six of those after the last okay. six times I got accused of not being human. <laughs> We're only human after all. Okay, uh, <laughs> next day, you're taking off rations, you're taking off food, you'll be um, travelling into the next hex, or next square, I guess. Uh, Simon, do you want to... Bentusi, the Dwarf Firepriest. So we've got, we've got Kent, the Dwarf gla Gladiator, Bentusi, the uh, Dwarf Firepriest. Marcia, the human thief, and Alex, uh, the halfling air priest. Gar Gargi, the halfling Today. air priest. Gargi, Alex, Alex. Took the player. <laughs> Sorry, it's because you were saying that Alex wasn't a human. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, Simon, do you want to roll an encounter check, D6, as you travel along? Yes, yeah, along. Hot days. Has, it's a helpful thing with Dark Sun is that weather checks aren't super relevant. <laughs> <laughs> it is mostly, is mostly quite dry. <laughs> I guess sandstorms. Yeah, that. so I think sandstorms are an encounter function <clears throat> rather than a weather <laughs> function. <laughs> that makes sense. Like, for, if you're running a Greyhawk box set from the for yeah. AD&D, uh, it's a weather table effect. But I think for uh, for ducks and it's the other way around. Like, it's you get terrain effects off um, encounters. The same for ships in the sea. You get some really terrible things happen to you by rolling random encounters using of ships in the sea. Uh, okay, uh, Alex, do you want to make your relevant NWPs? Anyone else going to make an NWP yeah. for heat protection or water finding? So, heat protection what? succeeds, and then water finding also succeeds. So I find some dirty water for someone, and I only need half as much. Okay, well, I guess what it says is I find enough water for myself. Mm. So if I only need half water, do I only find half water, or...? <laughs> No, you can give someone else, you can put a half measure back in. Really? You can put four pints back in. <laughs> how, well, how I've taken off 3.5 for thing. today, then, I've assumed. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. he's paying back in, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah. I think that's a... That's a... Okay. Uh, okay, evening is going to be Alex. Yes, it is. D6. That's a one. Uh -oh. That's a one. Um, actually, you are you are camping. So is that? Um, you are in. Uh, yeah, saying sandy wastes. We're counting as the shoreline of sandy wastes. Could you do two D twelve, please? Two D twelve. Yeah. Ooh. Different. Uh, Different dice for different tables. Ooh, 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 we go to a sub table. Roll 1d20. Sub table B. Sub table F in this case. <laughs> F in the chat. <laughs> hmm. uh, yeah, as you're uh, travelling along, looking up at, you know, between the Silk Lake and the mountains, uh, yeah, you see um, that there is uh, a thorn bush uh, barrier with obviously some kind of rampart behind it because you can see some dwarves behind a thorn bush barrier in front of a cut into the mountain like there's some sort of encampment beside uh, a mountain where you camp basically you come to a stop and you can see as the sun falls you see lights uh, come up and you can see that there are dwarves on a kind of off I mean it's probably it's a fairly clear day, so it's probably like 400 yards, you know, 500 yards away. It's like a third of a mile away on the other side. You're, you're like down by the Silt Lake there at the mountainside. Hmm. Should we go talk to them? 
do they? I, I, yeah, this is much better. I was I was one hundred percent certain he was going to say that the thorn bushes come to life, <laughs> or the bullet erupts from the ground. <laughs> that does happen. Yeah, I was going to say live it, plants that try to kill you and things that burst out of the ground to kill you happen quite a lot. Yeah, yeah. This is, this is no reverse. It's a good encounter. Can we? Could be. Can we just like? <laughs> From a distance, just like raise our hands in, in in like greeting, just to feel the waters. Uh, you know, even though there are no waters. The silt. Feel the silt. Yeah, feel the silt. Uh, yeah. Like a long distance. Uh, yeah. Hello. Uh, like. <laughs> well, I guess by the point you've got, you know, you've you've sent, you've you've sort of, uh, yeah, try try to signal towards them over this fairly clear expanse, like the the lakeside, as it were, between the mountain and the lake. Uh, you also will, um, yeah, you'll have set up camp and you'll have eaten and you've made your your camp by campfire, I guess, and you've eaten. Um, but yeah, so I guess you will um, then, uh, yeah, wave at them. Um, and then, yeah, you see a some sort of delegation coming out, uh, yeah, riding uh, Crowdloos. You see uh, there's four, um, four figures coming out riding Crowdloos. Yeah, I guess. Coming towards you. I, I imagine we're just happy to wait for them to, to turn up. Um, any yeah. yeah? Any other thoughts? They they are full full dwarves. Uh, they seem to be. They're they're quite short and stocky figures, like. Mules are taller. Mules, remember, like are much closer to human height or whatever. So, okay. so um, yeah, okay. From what I remember, <clears throat> at least at the tables, but mules are much closer to human height. From where so, we're, yeah, they, from where we're, not, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, from where we're standing. And there's two doors. The, uh, so here is the uh, yeah. the structure look. It's like a permanent structure that it looks like. Um. Not necessarily, as in you can't see much beyond the thorn bushes, but like you can see that at this distance because you can see, you know, it's a bit like seeing hedges. You can, at a third of a mile, you can see hedgerows, can't you? Um, over a clear field. So you can see like thorn bushes, uh, but you don't know what's behind it. Like the thorn bushes are high enough and they've obviously been pushed into place or pulled into place or something. Like, mm -hmm. so, like it's, it's a barricade of some kind. Uh, it's, yeah. I, that's not uncommon. Like the idea of you, you see that, like the idea of either permanent, like growing in place or pulled into place, thorn bushes are not an uncommon building material. And are we on entirely open ground where we are? Uh, yes, because you're literally been traveling over an area of fairly open sand with some rocks, you know, between the mountains and the lake. All right. I guess we'll just wait for him to come then. There's nowhere to like take cover. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, obviously that, you know, if you want better cover, you can travel through the mountains themselves, basically. But that'll be a lot slower, as you'd expect. Mm -hmm. Whereas, yeah, as per even discussion earlier tonight, not having to travel directly through the mountains seemed preferable. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, uh, yeah, so, um, no, uh, by the way, the two dwarves in the party, um, Kent and Bentusi, do you have like a dwarf in focus? Because obviously dwarves, because I'd be happy to award XP actually for for that but like for fulfilling it but remember dwarves are really focused they have like a strong species kind of predilection to being like i'm going to get this task done um so yeah or a particular mission or something like that yeah so i don't know if kent and ben Tusi have like a particular mission in life um mm. I'll suggest keep Marcio alive. That's a great focus for you guys. I think Kent <laughs> wants to free enslaved gladiators. Bentuzi wants to understand the great fire in the sky. <laughs> yeah. I think he'll be working on that one a while. <laughs> he's asked many people about it. Yeah. Uh, but he's not much the wiser. Why it comes and goes. Where it will one day not rise. <laughs> Um, and so, ben, did, what was uh, what was Kent's uh, thing? Did you say something? He wants to free enslaved gladiators. Yeah, yeah, those are good uh, long-term goals. You can set yourself short-term focuses, um, and 
Is it? Is it the case that dwarves might actually get bonuses for things associated with a focus? They can get XP technically. But yeah, that's incredibly they... subject. That's incredibly subjective, obviously. But dwarves, they do. While performing some... tasks directly related to your focus, they get plus one to all saving throws and plus two or ten percent to proficiency and percentile. This is like that. This is an actual physiological thing. Like it's like there's an incredibly strong, um, yeah, like uh, pro probably adrenal. Uh, it's probably an adrenaline thing. Focus. You're like, I need to get this done. I need to get this done. They've built in quest XP directly into the <laughs> biology of the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah because they realised quest XP sucks, they decided they'd put it into directly into the dwarf <laughs> instead. <laughs> the great DM in the sky. So, uh, yeah. Um, as they as they approach, uh, yeah, you can see these kind of grey-skinned or semi-grey-skinned bald uh, figures, um, greyish-skinned, I guess, probably fair to say. Uh, they're kind of tan. It's like a, a thing where I guess there's just a touch of tan uh, in, a, in amongst it. Uh, typically beardless, uh, very sinewy, strong. Um, it's a, it's a hard life often living out because they often do live out in the desert or or in you know in in, in tough conditions, uh, and they arrive on their their cronies. You can see that they uh, um, have uh, swords strapped across their backs, uh, and they have um, spear kind of light lances or spears with um, stone tips, um, which are are levelled at you, not like you know they're about to charge. But uh, um, just you know, level down at you, pointing towards you, and uh, there's, and one of them um, uh, calls out. This is probably at sixty feet, twenty yards. So yeah, say no, say yeah, something like that. Say say no. Actually, for range sake, we're saying more than that. It's like uh, forty yards or so. But maybe one comes slightly closer and calls, and uh, just uh, says in a not overly aggressive way you know what what's your business here uh do, do uh yeah what uh do you have uh do you have business in this area who, who is our party leader at the moment i'm not sure our business is our own um, sadir is dead uh, yeah. is dead yeah so. who's not got a negative charisma modifier um <laughs> Kent Ooh. does not have a negative one. So oh, yes, I have zero. I have a charisma of ten, which is... So we're, we're is just Quint passing a... through on the way to Valak. Is Quint a gladiator? What, what are you... He's a gladiator, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I tell him we're just passing through on the uh, way to Valak. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and you, do you have reaction of zero, Kent? Is that what you're saying? Uh, yeah, thirteen charisma. Yeah. Oh, I, I thought it might. I, yeah, it must be fourteen that it ticks oh, no, over. Sorry, plus one, plus one. Plus one. Yeah, sorry. Plus one. Yeah. Yeah, I thought. I thought that would be. Yeah. Charisma is a useful. It, like, if you actually use all the rules that are in the books rather than refusing to use them, like all the stats are useful, and I think that's a good one. Actually, that reaction, reaction is incredibly great. powerful. Yeah, like re reaction is an incredibly powerful. Um, Hiring thing. That's good as well. Introduce yourself as Mahdi. Yeah, one did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now. I kind of, I kind of feel like uh, Marcia has a sort of Lawrence of Arabia thing going on with her, kind of sneaking around, talking to people. Thing, she, yeah. Uh, Could I mean, be. yeah, that you are being indifferent. Um, yeah, they, they are fairly indifferent to you. Uh, like, yeah, so it's slightly warmed up by speaking to a fellow dwarf, perhaps, or at least a slightly charismatic dwarf. I don't know, uh, but they, uh, they, they, it just says fairly bluntly, so you know. It's dwarfish. You probably the rest of you probably know this from travelling with Ben Tusi, who's very blunt, and uh, Kent, who's quite quiet. Um, but it just says, you know, it just says, uh, keep away from the mine workings. Uh, we, we 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 will fire upon intruders. Naturally. Did you say mine workings? <laughs> he, he says mine workings, not your workings. Um, well, I'm just thinking that mines 
when you mine something, you often want to then sell that thing to people. Some trade, some... Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he, uh, he kind of just looks at you and, um, yeah, we'll say, uh, uh, what, 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 what do you, what do you propose? What are you implying? <clears throat> uh, I point to our caravan. He caravan. Kind of we're, over the camp. we're a trade caravan. Uh, I'm not sure what you're mining, but perhaps there's a mutual, uh, beneficial agreement we can come to. If you have things to sell. <clears throat> yeah. Um, yeah, he, he, uh, he'll, he'll, he'll shrug and say, uh, uh, I think not today, stranger. We'll, we'll bring it back in time and make our own money. Do you require divination services or philosophy of the sun? <laughs> Probably he, like, it starts to lean forward at the first bit and then, like, leans back, like, what? As you start to talk about the sun. Um, he he he'll, he'll ask like what what divination services do you offer like you know divination services are real so he's quite happy to find out. I am a servant of the Great Fire. I can tell you the time of day. Does <laughs> 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 uh, does does Bentusi have divination as an NWP or something? Or is this just? That's a good question. Actually. <laughs> is it... I should read my <laughs> no. No, he doesn't have MP. <laughs> he has healing and herbalism. I can offer healing. That's actually good, useful stuff, yeah. Yeah, um, I useful yeah. stuff, not the uh, connection. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, he, uh, uh, yeah the, the dwarf says, the great fire, so you call it, is, I find, and he looks up at the kind of dimming sun on the horizon, eminently predictable. <laughs> Uh, with more more than a touch of uh, exhaustion and bored, you know, like, yes, this isn't in his voice. Ah, oh, you um, too are ascended uh, to the Great Fire. Uh, <laughs> he, 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 like, turns his crow around and just starts riding off. He's a dwarf, he doesn't care. <laughs> he's, he's not that interested. Uh, we could have offered um, him. Yeah, he'll be joining the others. That yeah. would have been more useful. That was successful. We avoided combat. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Uh, the uh, the dwarves have been staying behind. Uh, who you could see, kind of like, were couched somewhat to charge in. You could see they're kind of like keeping their reins tight. Um, kind of turn around and they begin to ride off. Uh, occasionally, one of them stopping and just watching back towards you. Uh, but yeah, they're 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 quite quick. You know, they're obviously they're mounted, so they're able to get back to their camp quickly. Um, but yeah, no, no, next day. Can I just check? I guess we are back to rations, yes. Standard Go rations for weigh four pounds. Do they weigh five? Three pounds, pounds it should be. Oh, is that three pounds, three pounds over a week, or is that three pounds each? Because I, 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 I know we've had this conversation a lot. Have I just not been? It's three. For standard ration is three pounds each. I think an iron ration is one pound each. Okay, no, I see what's happened. I just have not tied that value to the cell. I see. Hang on. That makes way more sense. Times <laughs> that one. Boom. Okay. All right. Um, also, we're probably moving at like half speed. Sorry, I should probably should have mentioned that our caravan is currently like two thousand five hundred and fifty pounds. Well, haven't you? Yeah, haven't you got both kanks strapped up to it? Possibly we do, but is I think the... a two kank caravan, its threshold is like two thousand five hundred. Uh, can is there anyone who's happy to carry stuff? I mean, if you're carrying two thousand six hundred, um, well, how much are you actually? Over? Uh, how much can a kank carry? Because they probably can. Um, a kank can probably carry some other stuff, right? You want to have well, I don't, I don't actually, I'm trying to remember if I mentioned this before, because um, Gargi does have his, his like, personal-sized um, sand skimmer thing. Uh, what's it called? A uh, wind, wind sailing thing. Um, I, I'm not sure if he can carry they things on that. Boards, or... don't they? Hmm? Of, of a what board? The loser board. I think that's what they call it, isn't it? Uh, I think you're mispronouncing that. <laughs> 
It's 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 it's, it's actually pronounced awesome. very very cool. Yeah. Yeah. They call him Gargi McFly. <laughs> Uh, I mean, Alex will... was earlier discussing how much he hates Back to the Future. That's an actual <laughs> canon thing that happened in real life, in me like a thing that a Alex, not Gargi, said. So, I don't think I ever used the word hate. <laughs> it was heavy, heavily implied. Well, I, I, I think I was, you know, decrying the clumsiness of its time travel logic. <laughs> Um, yeah, Let I think I'd, I'd, I'd um, described it more like the um, the the uh, what's it called the the kind of similar wind <clears> board <throat> thing at the start of the uh, Treasure Planet. So I think I'd, I'd described it before. Okay, well, I think I mean I yeah. can't I can't find any <laughs> yeah. stats here on how much the can can carry, but I think it was a lot. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, I That's very that. scientific. This I is know. this is actually how militaries do this, Tom. Yeah, they yeah. Like, just have a guy say, "I think I think you could do a lot like with that cat with that wagon." Trust me, just trust me, bro. Yeah, yeah, trust me, bro. Um, I can, I mean, I, I can get the actual tank stat block up, but well, I don't know if that will tell me. There, but... Animals domestic tank. They often weigh as much as 400 pounds and set up for four feet tall at Maybe the back. Maybe that's what I got confused with. They're eight foot long. They uh, do 1d6 damage. Yeah, I'm not sure if it... I mean, I could check Dune Trader, but I doubt it's in Dune Trader, is it? To be honest. Like, I think it's that they, it's that the cat. I mean, but if they're both pulling the thing, they're not going to have to carry too much more anyway. It's more, how much are you overburdened? That was the question. How much uh, are you overburdened? Like, a lot. If we like, there's already some stuff on the kank, <laughs> like the uh, kank feed, and uh, like a lot. Yeah. If that, so in total, we've got like our total weight of all our gear, which is spread across the kanks and the caravan, is 2,800. Near enough. Mm hmm. But if the tanks can pull 2,500, doesn't that mean you're overburdened by 300? Over by 300, yes. If they can pull 2,500. Yeah, and you've got two pulling it. Can people just carry the 300? Yeah, that's perfect, yeah. Ben Does Tusi, anyone have strength? Ben Tusi loves carrying 300 pounds of stuff. Yeah. Uh, What's... Um... I've got 44. Strength matters here, guys. I can go up by, like... I can carry like 10 pounds of equipment before I'm at my next encumbrance bracket. My max press is 280. Yeah. Um, weighs about 155. I can carry a bit of stuff. I can carry yeah. almost 100, actually. Wow. Before you're in light. Before I'm completely over encumbered. Oh, I, yeah. I, yeah. Can quite, I can go quite high before I'm over encumbered, but obviously, if we're like in heavy encumbrance load, we're going to make no progress either. Well, I don't know because I've got my sandboard. Yeah. So it's not like I'm walking. Because <laughs> I'd, I'd be slow anyway, because I'm a halfling. Hmm. What's your movement rate? Yeah, his what? movement rate is six anyway. Uh, well, yeah. yeah, six, I guess my, I guess six mine standard is as well, because I'm a dwarf. I don't think dwarves are even that <laughs> slow. Like dwarves are slower than humans, but they're not. I mean, my base rate says it's. They might six. Be, I think dwarves might be eight or something. I think uh, dwarves might be eight. Uh, uh, not sure. I need to again check. But... Uh, I've got it open here. Can Marcy, what's uh, Marcy's encumbrance? Oh no, dwarves, dwarves are the same as half yeah. yeah. Six. Dwarves, dwarves are six. Yeah. Marcia, what's your, what's your encumbrance level? Um, I am just below light, so I could carry about 30 more pounds before I go into moderate. That's one thing is, the, the human, she can afford to go slower because everyone else is going really slowly. Yes. I don't. So I don't have like, a. I don't have a huge strength, but I could carry maybe thirty more yeah. pounds. Well, okay. so th you could have put thirty on Marcia. She'd then be at six. Um, you said Kent can take a few more pounds. About ten, yeah, twelve. Uh, how much can Bentusi take? Um, currently carrying about fifty-two. Um. 
before you end up dropping below six movement? Uh, good question. And the answer is I don't know. I currently so, yeah, have 52 you weight carry. Your, your normal map. Weight allowance is 135, yeah. but that is that until I'm encumbered or is that until okay, I can't move at all? No, that's. What's your strength? Max, max press is the maximum you, amount you can carry. Okay, my strength is 19. Like oh, okay, so you probably can carry quite a lot. I can carry quite a lot, and I'm carrying about yeah, 152 uh, pounds worth of just general gear. Yeah, uh, that's mostly because he's carrying 50. No, so yeah, you, you've got one. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you could carry. So you could carry 80. You can carry yeah. 80 extra uh, yeah. without changing your movement. Marcy can carry 30 to drop down to six. Kent can carry, so that's 110. What did, what did you say Kent could carry extra? About another 12, so we're at 122. Yeah, uh, how much extra can Gargi carry? Uh, not actually very much at all. Uh, before before uh, getting light encumbrance, it's like three. Let's, let's what about Zedric? No difference. Okay, so Z Zedric has Stra 16, doesn't he? So... His max carry is 70. I mean, he can probably carry another 40 or something. Yeah, because he can go to moderate he's not as well carrying as he's much, human, he? so he can slow down a bit. Oh, yeah, that's the thing. He can actually go up to moderate. He doesn't just go to light. He can carry, in that case, so more than 40 then. Um, oh, sorry, one second. Uh, how is this? It's hard to open this book again. It's the same place I just was. 16. Uh, okay. Moderate would be 100 pounds. No, moderate would be 129 pounds, or 130 pounds. Oh, pounds, right, right, right. So top edge. Le less, less yeah. than heavy. Yeah. So in that case, he can take 100. You're at about 230. I mean, yeah, so yeah assuming let's... Gargi can't carry very much. Maybe we can just ditch. Yeah. Um... <laughs> I could carry. Actually, I could go all the way up to the top, the very top end of my moderate. So instead of carrying 30, I could mm. carry 65, and that would put me just below going all the way up to heavy yeah so that'd be two that's 265 yes yeah, 35 to get to a reasonable speed okay we could ditch some of we've currently got loads of torches we've got loads of firewood we've got i don't really want to get rid of the rations we've got quite a lot of rope we could get we've got like 100 how much rope have we got like i've got 50 foot you're carrying 50 foot all right. Yeah, I've got 50 foot of rope. We're halving the amount of rope then. We're leaving. We'll, we'll just give it to the miners as a gesture of goodwill. <laughs> you like yeah. rope? We can't yeah. carry all this rope. We don't know how we got it here. <laughs> you like rope? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm just imagining you like, so how much rope do we have? We've got eight miles of rope. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I'm, actually, I'm just realizing. <laughs> I'm basically working on the principle that all the stuff that was on the kank is now spread amongst us, basically, because that's 248 yeah. roughly. And then I'm going to bring the other total down to 2,500 near as I can. I yeah, just realised right. Gargi okay. can actually carry um, a little bit because I've got rations on his sheet, which I think I'd probably mentioned before in Darst. Yeah. You'll have, have, have put them in. You'll have put them in, won't you? So, yeah. Yeah. So I, I can carry like 15. Okay. Okay. Well, let's... Which, okay, so that's which fine. of these... Like, four bolts of common cloth, do we care about that? They're probably worth not nothing, but you know, if, if they're probably not like uh, where's where's the thing? And I guess just look at it and see what seems to least. Like, the tanks only two food a day, don't they? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let me just. Well, actually, firstly, they've eaten some, and I've not taken that off. So we've been there two days. That goes down two two eight. Uh, I should. I'll move all that across in a second. Uh, I think that's all right. I think uh, maybe I'll, I'll just for the, for safety, I'm just going to drop an extra six kang feed, and then that takes us down to, yeah, our total now is two seven, no, yeah, two seven twenty eight, which I think is fine because that gives remember that uh, amateurs amateurs study tactics. Professional study logistics. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay, yeah, I don't know where I got the value um, for the kank okay. carry there, but I must have just read its weight and. Um, what it we carry. we we might have we might have ballparked it based on strength. Uh, we're back to beach. Beach daytime check. Yep. 
Uh, nighttime check. Uh, yeah, I guess water stuff for Alex. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think, yeah. The other person, I think the other current active PC who has, I think it's heat protection, is Garrus, who's not here, so. Uh, that I think it's, yeah. is a fail on heat protection, I think. Where am I? Water gather. Yeah. That is one thing, is actually it's kind of useful that you can, yeah. on That's a better than 50% chance. Yeah. yeah, better than 50% chance, you can get ga gain water for your party, which is a pretty yeah. valuable skill. Yeah. It's not very much, but when you're talking about like yeah. giving water to four people, that's quite a lot. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. So. So wait, did you succeed on finding um, water? Find water, yes. Yes, um, he did. But so that's z zero change for him. Yeah, he doesn't. Yeah, he doesn't okay, consume so, anything. So I take off four instead of that. So it's... Beat it. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay. Nighttime check is Tom. Dice oh, cam. Dice cam. Here ones. we go. Da, 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 da. What is it? It is. Uh-oh. A one. <laughs> oh. 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 It's these nighttime checks. Oh, my. This one. You should have made friends with the dwarves. Roll two. Yeah, roll 2d12. 2d12? Oh, okay. Hang on. Just got to find Yeah. <laughs> Tom's like, I don't even own 2d12. I own them. I'm just going to have to dig them out. Uh, where's the first one? Oh, I don't even have a D12 in that. So, well, have I done with that? Right. Around, I wouldn't worry. Nighttime encounters are universally always good. That is true. Yes. <laughs> it's literally impossible for anything to go wrong in a nighttime encounter. 2D12, here we go. Dice cam. We got. Four and ten. Fourteen. <laughs> that is how that is how that adds up. That <laughs> ah. I have to read one dice at a time. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. You you um are um yeah you're approached by um, uh, in your camp. Uh, you hear pipes and uh, yeah you're approached at, at a distance with kind of signals of peace by. Um, elves uh, who uh, come, uh, one speaking in common, uh, offering trade. Oh. What do they want to trade? Do they want rope? <laughs> <laughs> do you have the rope anymore? Didn't you get rid of the rope? I'm trying to forget. There's always more the rope. <clears throat> Are these the ones that eat you? <laughs> yeah, we left it with the miners. These aren't the ones that eat you, right? Yeah. You seem obsessed I, with people. Are you with saying this to God? <laughs> Oh, no, that's God. Okay. Yeah. God, God is the one that eats people. Okay. I don't <clears> eat people. <laughs> I, 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 I eat tall people. It's completely different. Yeah, <clears> to <throat> quote Flans and Swan, we don't eat people. Eating people is wrong. Yeah. I'd never eat another halfling. <clears throat> uh, what do they want to trade? <laughs> yeah, they... Uh... Yeah. What do they want to trade? <laughs> Uh, yeah, um, they, they, they are. Uh, they, they, they've got markings of the Skysinger tribe, um, which is semi permanently based in Nibane, but is like big trading, like of the elves, maybe the most famous trading elves across the tier region. Um, and uh, what will they have today? Mm. Uh, da, da, da. Um, yeah, uh, they uh, have uh, some in their caravans. You see it, they're like that. They um, have uh, some pull along, like they're, they're kind of literally running along with uh, um, almost rickshaws in this area. They've got uh, uh, some small wilderness animals, he says. Uh, they have. Um, yeah, uh, so yeah, uh, well, and domestic animals. You can see there is coming up behind the rickshaw, there are some herders as well. And uh, they have, um, yeah, so spell components. He, he says, uh, as a mere curiosity, of course, uh, but uh, magical reagents um, of the ancient world, which are very good for museum use. Oh. We uh, also says, have small wilderness animals, I say, putting a hand on Goggy's shoulder. No, just kidding. I don't do that. <laughs> 
That's a good way of losing. You got a harem. <laughs> you do actually have a small world of animal. You, you captured a harem, remember? Yeah, yeah. Um, and he says, and uh, and other other strange curiosities of various kinds. Um, do they I, I want also to like lie? meat. They've got like, they've got like dried meat, dried meat, uh, wooden goods, glassware, travel supplies. Do we need to refresh our <laughs> rations? Yeah. Do we have enough rations to get the rest of the way? Um. Yeah, we're getting through about. I mean, how many days travel is it? Still about ten days. We've not been moving the thing in line, have we? Or have we? Well, it's been slow going through the mountains. Um, we'll you... move it a bit faster once we get out. Once I mean, you're once you're onto those barons, you'll, you'll be speeding be up by fifty percent. Uh, our weight limit. One, two, so three. If we can trade them some of our like, I don't know. Bolts stuff. of cloth or whatever. In, yeah, Would you yeah. like some chains? <laughs> no, don't give them the chains, but we want to sell them to an expert. What about these bottles of weird alcohol we found? Yeah, they're trade. I think they'd be trade. For they'd trade for those. They're not obviously they're not super heavy items, but uh, they'd, they'd 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 see them as valuable. Yeah, uh, ancient out like yeah, ancient spirits. <laughs> yeah. How many rations would they give us per one of those? Mm. A ration costs. Although I guess, I think, although like, I guess I would preferentially, as, as pointed out, give them the cloth because that's like ten pounds per bolt. Um, but yeah. It also, might be worth a lot more. I don't know. Yeah. No, indeed. Indeed. Let's have a look at provisions. Um, Stand rations is at three for seven, three gold for seven. Um, so that's thirty divided by seven. That's just over it's four. Three gold for seven. As in this, oh. be, you know, it's, uh, this is so ceramic. Yeah, um, at least that's one list. I think it depends where you get them. Let me try. So that would mean each ration would be four bits or so, just over four bits. Um, four bits for ceramic. So I think. Let's say they they would see it as being a bit of a seller's market for food out in in hostile terrain. You might make that five. Uh, how much? I don't know. How much is this? They will ask, where did you find this? These fine and mysterious. Uh, 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 yeah, um, uh, the, these uh, these fine and mysterious uh, goods. Uh, you actually, I think you did look up possibly what they were. Um, Emerald Sun and Czar. Uh, but yeah, these fine and mysterious goods. Where did you discover these? Uh, do we want to tell them? Well, I mean, Gargi doesn't know, but do 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 we want to tell them? Do, I don't know. I don't think we need to tell them exactly. <laughs> you know, a ruin over yonder. Yeah, we, just, we 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 found them in a ruined, what appeared to be a ruined, uh, a ruined uh, like uh, entertainment uh, venue of some kind. <laughs> yeah, consumed like a... by the sands. Yeah. Um, I mean, probably the the value um, after kind of the uh, yeah for direct barter with them putting a slight mark up as they are in the seller's position. Um, you could probably get. I mean, you don't need this many, but like looking at the value, you could get like three hundred to four hundred rations that way. They probably don't have four hundred rations to sell what, per one. Um, no, for all of them, for all bottles. All right. Wow. I was just adding up all of it. If you had to go for the more expensive one, the one that's worth 20, you could get 40 rations for that. I think it would offer you 40 rations for a bottle of the Emerald <clears throat> Sun. Well, could we get there with the cloth? Are they interested in the cloth at all? Cloth must be somewhat rare. Uh, yeah. Do you have a price on the cloth? Um, that was... I think you should do. Well, I, mean, I think that's in... Like, it might be, it might be in one of the books. But it's not... Um... In June Trader. Yeah, yeah that's how. Because yeah, they're interested. They're they they they're, they're interested. They will consider. Common cloth as well. Consider that. If, anyone, if anyone's looking, I'm looking for June Trader now. I'll check through the the, the campaign. Docs and rulebook. Yeah. No, I don't know. Uh, it's in here. Yeah. No, they they're looking. I say ah. Uh, uh, you, is this your entire trade package? I mean, at this point, you've got out some 
bottles and that. They're like, this is, uh, you, you, you say you're traders. Are you sure you're traders? Wow. I mean, me no criticism, of course. Traders and explorers. What what news do you have of the uh, of the road of of that? I assume they're coming from the opposite direction, or are they came coming from some other way, like the direction we're headed in. Uh, you're still in the mountain. You're still in the mountains, so yes, it will along the road that way. Cloth, right? Cloth, common cloth is seven copper, and it is seven ceramic. Seven ceramic, yeah. Yeah, seven ceramic, and it's uh, just like normal trade value in Nibbana, if that makes a difference. What's yeah yeah? What's the how many how many do you have? How many bolts? Four. Four. So that'd be twenty-eight ceramic, fifty-six rations. I'd say I say we take that, boys. <laughs> yeah. Like that's I mean that's emptying out a lot of their you know their their rations that they of the of the meats that of the dried meats they were selling. Um, take take it. Yeah. Fifty-six rations, yeah. and they and they they'll take all of it, will they? Yeah, they take the four bolts and they put it on a rickshaw. Yeah, uh, I think. Yeah, um, Gargi okay, might. Uh, what, here's what you can do, because they because they because they like you. Um, who rolled that encounter this time? Uh, Simon, do you want to roll uh, your next day in ca uh, Simon and Alex roll an encounter roll each now. So oh, they're going to to tell us if there's anything in there. Yeah. Yep, it's a quiet road to the west for a day. Sick. Well, in that case, G G Gargi might offer, uh, ask if, if any of them are injured, need any healing. Uh, perhaps might exchange perhaps for some, uh, you know, spell components yeah. that might be useful to him. Uh, I don't know yeah. if anything he needs, but um, no, it's a, I guess yeah, check your components. They say, uh, um, they oh, yeah, they take they take you to a uh, one of the rickshaws and uh, say, uh, uh, yes, I mean, I guess. Um, and do you have healing as well, or is this just spells you're thinking of? This is just me. Has. This, I think this is just... I, I don't think I have healing. Um, no. Oh, well, no, I do have healing. I do have healing. No, they, no, so, they, yeah. yeah, they say they have an That's elder who, uh, who they've been carrying around sick, who's in a, who's in a rickshaw, which is... Um, basically, this is a sort of thing that, you know... At, at, Actually, the, say, uh, oh. uh, it, is not, it is not after the tradition of our kind. And then just kind of... Yeah. <laughs> Say, uh, if you can help him run, it'll be much the better for him. <laughs> That's a bit harsh. Are the rations iron rations? Um, yes, they will be. Because it's, it's just, it's just meat, cured yeah. meat. <laughs> Basically, they're, they're like, do you want some biltong? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> all of it, please. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Elves and Athos are now Australian. That's, we were having this conversation before the stream, weren't we, boys? <laughs> uh, yeah, cool. Good, because if it was 56 standard rations, we'd have made our weight problem worse, not better. <laughs> well, like, I mean, we have anyway, but, like, substantially worse. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, in this case, it's with stuff you want, though. You've made it worse with stuff by £10 or something. Yeah, exactly. Stuff yeah, you want. Slightly worse, but with <laughs> stuff that ultimately will make it better. Yeah. Uh, have you taken off food for this is day three yeah no, okay um yeah so i mean alex if are you just dropping a are you gonna uh, do a healing check is that yeah you know? I'll, I'll, I'll do do a healing check first to see if it's you know like an injury or if it's a, a sickness or something or if he's just like old and dying old and decrepit and there's nothing that could be done, when you've done this from i declare this old. man old <laughs> sorry uh, uh super old <laughs> Uh, that's a success on a healing check. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, you, you, you look. Uh, you think he's uh, this elder has a uh, probably a mild fracture by elder. It's not like he's not like decrepit, but yeah, um, <laughs> has a mild uh, fracture in a leg bone. It's not like it's the kind of thing people can walk on, but obviously the problem is about running. Yeah. So is is a is a cure spe a, 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 a cure spell. Cure like wounds enough for that to heal that, or uh, it'd probably help it, yeah. If you want to drop yeah. a CLW, go for definitely it. do, definitely go for that. I'll just mark that. No, I, was about, I was about to put Alex cure white light wounds. I can't really separate you from your cannibalistic halfling. 
He's never even eaten anyone. He doesn't eat people. That's not the right one, is it? <laughs> okay. Yes, I am putting a little bit too much so, emphasis on people. <laughs> I don't eat real people, yeah. if you know what I mean. Or wink. <laughs> I think we had this conversation before the stream as well, didn't we? <laughs> um... I'm trying to yeah. think if there's any actual spell components yeah. Gargi needs, because most of his spells appear to be just verbal and somatic. Okay. Did you, um, so, uh, I was going to say, if you want to ask for a reagent, if you want to ask for any, basically, you don't, you can look at it while we're travelling, but just if you want a reagent, they will give you a, as long as it's not like worth 100 ceramic <laughs> or something, yeah. they'll give you some rea a reagent or two. Just you pick that as we go. What were you going to say, yeah. Tom? Uh, just Gargi needs to roll his water stuff. The night. Uh, oh yeah, for the the day that we encountered those. Uh, uh, succeed on heat protection, fail on find water. Oh. So half water to half gallon. So yeah, you half the amount. Uh, okay. Oh here we go. Um, that one too. Invisibility to uh, which one do I want? Invisibility to animals or invisibility to undead? Oh no, one of those is a holy symbol, isn't it? Yeah, so I guess invisibility to animals there. Holly or whatever equivalent plant it ends up being. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it'll, it'll be like a, a, a an acacia or something. They'll give you like like a um, a sprig of acacia thorns. Yeah. I don't think I've ever actually cast. It's not very comfortable when you put it in your component pouch. I don't think I've ever actually cast that. So. Do you know who has cast invisibility to animals? Bentusi. Bentusi. How did invisibility to animals go? Um, <laughs> unfortunately, the animals were psychic. I, I'm not convinced they were animals, <laughs> you know. And they were intelligent psychic <laughs> organs, and so they pretended not to notice. Yeah. And then did. So, the next day is a free day of travel, because you, well, I'm going to, as in, do your water and stuff, but obviously, you had your encounters, you know nothing's going to happen, so. That is going to be at the same rate, because... I know this is annoying. You can see on the on this square, this is relevant for anyone doing logistics, you can see you're in the sandy waste half, you're coming into rocky barrens. Your speed is now going to be increased by 50%. How much does that affect? If it takes you two days to get across the sandy waste hex, um, and your speed increased by 50%. You're travelling... It means you're travelling... Um, 0.75 hexes a day, doesn't it? So, yeah. From what you were travelling, I mean, yeah. So, three, three okay. hexes every uh, four days. Yeah, that's right. We're just at, yeah. Uh, what, was, what was the water stuff for the, today? Uh, succeeded both, so... Okay, so 3.5. Yeah. <sighs> okay, so um, next day you are into the Rocky Barrens. You'll actually be able to see Barlick long be able to, before you, you'd, you know, get there. Um, you'll probably even see painfully close. Uh, yeah, there'll be like silk boats, uh, but obviously not going to random bits of shoreline in the middle of nowhere. So. Yeah, I, we're back into encounter territory. Um, it is beach, beach daytime. And Alex, do you want to do your nighttime checks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that one fails. Nope. Uh, but that one succeeds, so I don't cost any water today. Don't cost any water, yep, great. Okay. Um, you increased the water by 0.5 yesterday, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, equivalent. Okay, so night time is Tom. Righto. Righto. Are you an elf? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. A six. A six, great. Okay, um, I'm just thinking it's going to be three. You're going to be halfway into this hex after another two days, aren't you? That's how it's going to work, something like that. Oh, sorry. No, 0.75. So you're into this hex. 
you'll finish this hex today. Okay. So, uh, Simon, daytime check. We're okay. Yep. Um, Alex, you're all three checks now. So, yep. do your three checks in a row. Heat protection succeeds. Find water. I think that either just succeeds or just fails. That just fails. And then a, a d6. Five. Great. Uh, sorry, which, which so ones you did, cost you, did off. you fail both or succeed one and fail right, the other? Uh, heat protection succeeded, find water failed. Okay, so so I only cost four half today, yeah, no, four and a half. Okay. Okay. Um, next day, beach. As you travel into this one. And Tom evening. Alex, you need to make your rolls for the evening as well. Yeah. But... yeah. Two. Fail. And yeah. succeed, so I find water, so I cost nothing. You don't cost anything, yeah. Okay. 0.75 of the way through this one. Uh, next day, Simon. And next night, Alex, do your three rolls. Yep. Halfway through heat this one. Protection, uh, 15 is a fail on heat protection. Yep. A fail heat protection. Succeed, find water. So that's going down by four. And roll a one. Uh oh. Yep, this is night time, halfway through this hex. Great. Okay, you're going to be Rocky Barons is probably 2d12. 2d12, Alex. 2d12. Well, I'm just looking at the uh, subtables associated with this one. Ah, okay. <laughs> oh dear. Mm -hmm. <sighs> the, t the Dragon of Tear lands at your fireplace, fire, your, your campfire. He says, God nom noms. <laughs> I, I offer it my dinner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Puts out a hand surprisingly delicately. He says, I like to play Apocalypse World. What do you like to play? <laughs> we must slay him now. <laughs> ben Tusi has incredibly strong opinions about story games. <laughs> it's okay, we can't die. He's playing a story game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can you can intentionally take uh, downsides and disadvantages uh, to yeah. advance the uh, plot of your character. Um, great. So yeah, you you um you yeah you see as you're camping, um, again in the half light you see. Uh, dust down to the south, kind of the kind of thick, heavy dust uh, that you get sometimes from stony barrens, uh, where when it's been a hot day. Is it moving in a particular direction, or is it growing or expanding this dust cloud? Do you want to make a unless you have a relevant NWP, make a whiz check maybe? Oh, ro yeah. Make it ro roll against wisdom and tell me by how much you'd succeed or, or fail or whatever. Okay, I will have. Uh, rolled under my wisdom, if that's what I'm trying to do. Um, that, by, yep, by how much? By 11. But <laughs> your wisdom is 20. Yes. It's ben 10 is actually, actually good to Yeah, that's your yeah. some good skills. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, so yeah, Bentusi, uh <laughs> he puts himself to the floor, he listens, and he's like, the Urukai march. And... <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, uh, the dust cloud is heading in your direction. Okay. Yeah, it's not incredibly thick, but for Stony Barrens, it's fairly thick. Uh, you'd probably think. I guess none of you, unless any of you have survival Stony Barrens, you wouldn't be able to tell much more than that, I suspect. Given the speed of our cart is not uh, rapid, um, 
I intend to cast invisibility to animals. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> two black mysterials appear. Two wild black mysterials appear. <laughs> Presumably, we have a bit of time, so perhaps we could try and find somewhere more fortifiable. Perhaps move the, move the camp a little. Uh, yeah, there's only good terrain around that we could potentially hide behind. Or, uh... Uh, yeah, I don't know if anyone... Does anyone have any... I mean, fight, it's the kind of thing fighters having tactics would help here. Um, mm. Or survival rocky barons. No. Anyone have any... <laughs> Not really. I'm good at running. No. Just a little bit of... <clears throat> <laughs> does Marcia have any useful skills? Well, I have survival, but it's for Sandy Waste. Uh, I would like to detect. Yeah. I'd like to use, I would like to use my direction sense to sense the direction. <laughs> Is that one? Ah, yeah. <laughs> Boom. Uh, you can roll a die. That's fine. <laughs> I won't even bother. <clears throat> I hide behind. Um, uh, yeah. I can't hide behind anyone because everyone's <laughs> short in this party. God damn it. Marcia hides behind Bentusi and everyone can see her. <laughs> <laughs> she thinks longingly of Stiv. <laughs> yeah, the whole party can hide behind Stiv. Uh, yeah. I mean, Zedric, I think, does have a bow, doesn't he? So I guess he'll get his bow out for now, and but he won't get rid of his armor or anything. He'll just get up on the car. I mean, yeah. Are there any big rocks what, what around? Yeah, the Even rocks there will be some stone. There'll be some stone. Yeah, yeah. You're in stone. You're in. Um, you're in um, rocky barrens, aren't you? So yeah, there are. I would. I would like to try to hide, so at least I'm not visible. So even if they come to, yeah. even if something comes to the caravan, <laughs> I can. Use, I'm just going to use shadow form. I'm going to have my bow on me, and use shadow form. <clears throat> oh wait, sorry. I, I've. Miss this. What what time of day is this happening in? Um, it's later evening, so you you've got again the sun on the horizon. So there are, are there shadows for me to shadow form into? Yes, there are. Yeah, yeah. There I are. can hide, perhaps hiding in the shadows. Mm -hmm. What's your hide in shadows? Uh, it is sixty five. Great. Um, Kent is shadow forming. I've just realized a like, natural healing rate. I just mean like I haven't updated my HP since yes. the end of last session. Um, it's you can travel on light duty. Is it at one health a day? Yeah. I feel and like. Actually, if people have got cure light wounds or something, can we assume that people have been doing that every day? Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Probably yeah. Would we'll you mind see. giving me a couple of rolls of that? I was gonna say. Yeah. Yeah. Ben two do you want to roll one? Yeah. There we go. So you get four. Okay. And one from uh, uh, Kirky as well. Yep. Also gives you four. Goggly. Okay, so that will take me to 19. Yep. And we've been travelling for more than six days, haven't we? So I think that, that will take me. Yes, you have. Yeah, it's been travelling. This is the eighth evening. So yeah, you are now at full HP. Yep, great. Um, great. Uh... Okay, uh, what are other people doing? Ben Tusi and Gargi. What are you doing? The other two are just um, leaving, apparently. I'm Disney waiting until the cloud gets close, and I'm going to cast invisibility to animals and hope that the thing coming towards us is, in fact, an animal. And if it's not, yeah. I'll be and then you're going to... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I see... <laughs> yeah. Bentusi is planning to stride out in front of it, scre screaming, are you an animal? <laughs> Did, didn't, didn't you use your, um, your, your material for that? Oh yeah, good question. Uh, what uh, would you, would you like? Would you like this bit of <laughs> of leaf? Yes, I would love that bit of leaf. Um, <laughs> Brilliant. I've got whatever you've got to give me, because otherwise I yeah. Uh, uh, in that case, cut, please please also cast the spell on me, and then um, you're next to you. Is it an area effect? I can't. It's remember. it's a uh, multiple targets based off the cast level. Yeah. Um, and where are you? Where are you guys going to be then? Where are you guys going to be? Near behind one of the. Wagons, yeah, of. hiding behind one of the wagons, peeking yeah, well, over got, it. You've got, you've, got, you've got, you've got one You've got one wagon. You could just go behind it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, I guess Cedric will get his bow and get into the wagon and just like shelter down, so he's got a shot over the edge. 
seems like the best option, doesn't it, for him? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, we have is managed, your, by the way, is your, uh, four encounters all at night. <laughs> not at, yeah, not during the day at all. Is your invisibility to animals just two targets, or can uh, Zedra be included? It is uh, one creature per level, so it'd be three targets. Three targets, and it lasts one turn per plus one round per level. So, so you could get you could get Zedric. Thirteen, yeah. 13 yeah. minutes. Thirteen minutes. So basically, when you think they are a turn movement away, because it's going to yeah. last thirteen, or like less than a turn, mate. Like, yeah, it's going to last thirteen minutes. Basically, material component of this spell is holly rubbed over the recipient. <laughs> <laughs> so is it is it better or worse that it's not holly, which is spiky, but it is like acacia spike? <laughs> yeah. Either way, we will get a rash. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's like it's like acupuncture, but emphasis on the the puncture more than the acu. <laughs> Great. Uh, yeah. Great, great, great. Cool, cool, cool. Yep. So you, um, uh, yeah, you uh, will um, wait, uh, wait a while, and. Um, could you roll me a uh, whose encounter was it? Was it Tom? Tom, could you roll it, me an encounter? No, it was, uh, it was me. Was that, yeah, it's one of the night Tom ones. Uh, so you roll a d10. A d10. Four. Mm -hmm. Okay, and let me. You know, did I actually prepare it that So, you are, you are, uh, what what you see is, you're actually a slight hollow, um, but which means you've got, against the sun, you have a really good, like, illumination of the ridge above you. You know, because you're thinking about the sun dropping uh, into the west. So you're looking up west as it kind of begins to drop away. And uh, illuminated above you, coming up from the southwest, uh, you see a large number of insectoid humanoidish creatures multi-limbed humanoids okay. yeah highlight high, like, they they uh they stop um up on the ridge uh you're in a in a in this kind of natural hollow um they don't seem to have seen you the visibility is working <laughs> there are maybe a dozen that you can see We should be very quiet. What do you wish to do? A cow and pirate. A dozen <laughs> of them. I mean, maybe we could just attack. We do. We do. We all have ranged attacks. There, there are um... twelve of them. That would be a terrible idea. <laughs> yeah, be... and also <laughs> they're usually pretty good at fighting. I oh, I bet they're, 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 they're rather right, tough I as assume. well, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, yeah, you've literally Simon, fight. you've literally played one before. Yeah, he yeah. He's bad at fighting. Yeah. I mean, that was a you actually played two. Yeah, I played two. Yeah, it was. You then played another one br very briefly. His cousin who turned up to, like, <laughs> take over and redeem his honour for, like, a quarter of a session. Yeah, I um, would not pick a fight with 12 of them, personally. Yeah. But what... But if they do notice us and start a fight, <laughs> it'd be bad. That is true. Which and us attacking we them from surprise would be my, better than My us feeling is attacked. us attacking from surprise will not save us. <laughs> uh, but, it, like, you know, as compared to them attacking us first. Plus, I'll get surprised anyway, because I'm already, like, shadow formed. Do we still have the elves with us? Did they follow us this far? <laughs> no. No, the elves are going to get away with Yeah. Um... I think if they turn on us, we negotiate. And if we have to sacrifice one of our party to them, I vote it's not me. <laughs> um, I don't think an extra round, potentially, for off surprise, is going to help us a huge yeah, I, I just don't see that as being make, making the difference. I think we just hope that they haven't seen us. Yeah, like maybe I we think... score 2d6 extra hits on them. If we're lucky, maybe three to six extra hits on them if we do really well. That's not going to turn the tide in this one. If they outnumber us roughly due to one. But couldn't. An, no. an, ex, an extra round could just be a bless. <laughs> could let us bless, which is 
probably. I haven't memorized Blast. Okay, they, so unless you've memorized got it, twice I've, I've, as many I've got it. As us, and I, I just think they, that no amount of Bless is going to cut it. <laughs> well, I'm just thinking, like, if our if we assume that if we start a, if we get in a fight, we'll lose, and just hope we don't get in a fight. That's kind of the. There are alternatives. Like we could try to negotiate. Like I can um, impress them by telling them what time it is from looking at the sun. <laughs> <laughs> I just, you know, we kind of want to try and take like not the the path that loses the least, but the path that wins the most. <laughs> you know, still, he... still ends us all dead. I mean, the path. That uh, wins I the think most it's a bad gamble. Seeing us and us continuing to buy like and selling our shit. Yeah, well, no, no. That... if we attack, sound like an. You sound like an evil version of that Rose character from The Last Jedi. It's not what we're fighting against, it's how many things we, we uh, are not left alive. It's not how many people we kill, it's how many things are not alive. If we don't attack, well, the evil we might know. survive. If we do attack, we will certainly die. We might kill more of them, yeah, that, but we're doomed. That's the way I see it. I feel like if we... if we, Because also, if we attack them, then we've got no scope for negotiation either. Like... If we attack them, we're definitely in combat and we're definitely dead. <laughs> okay. But if, if half of them wander off. Wait, what if we wait and then half of them wander yeah, off? Yeah, if half I mean, of them wander off, change, and they're not coming back. Then, like, then maybe. Uh, like some of them wander off and then a couple more come towards us to investigate it, then yeah, maybe we attack <laughs> them before they can call their buddies. But with 12 of them just stood up there on the high ground, not having seen us, I don't think we should be hasty. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they have to tactical. Have you not seen that other? And have you not seen that other relevant Star Wars film, Alex? <laughs> which which one? I they have the high like... ground. It's over. Yeah. <laughs> it's over. Is is that one relevant to any? Of course. As soon as if anyone, as soon as anyone has the high ground, it's over. Yeah. Um. Yeah. You play D&D, you know you get yeah, an advantage. So, so if, if, if 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 that's true, what the yeah. fuck happened to Qui Gon? It wasn't the high ground advantage. He got stabbed in the stomach. No, he got he fucking do do uh uh Maul like did a fucking flip over his head and then cut him in half. Exactly. Maul had the high ground. He was over his head. Exactly. Maul had the high ground. <laughs> but Maul was hanging on for dear life on the pit beneath. No, that was the other. That that was the other extreme. You're, Listen. That, yeah, you're getting mixed up. That's not quite. Your, well. your point taken. <laughs> the point is taken. Those prequels were were as inconsistent <laughs> and bad as Back to the Future. Now, now we know. <laughs> All your film opinions, Alex. Thank you very much. We can we wait and see. All right, it's, if they don't seem like they've seen us now, I think the best move is. To not move. Yeah, in this situation, we are Qui Gon, not Obi Wan. The, the Qui Gon died. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that, is, that is my point. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. We get stabbed through the stomach by uh, a giant hunting insect men. What do these? What do they like? Killing and feeding. They like yes. eating elves. Yeah, I mean, they're never elves, which is a good thing. And they're not much good for eating than Hey, we, we know where there's some elves. Yeah, we could give them directions. <laughs> That's a good idea, actually. No, no, we can't do that. Why not? Because uh, I'm a chaotic good character, that's why. <laughs> no, um, I've, I've of course, there'd never be such a thing. <laughs> well, let's just see what they do when we do nothing but yeah. hide. Yeah, we continue to hide. I would say Marcia is like signaling, has signaled hide. Then she disappears. By the time you finish the conversation, she's travelled 15 miles towards Barlek, rock by rock, <laughs> away from you. <laughs> she's gone. Uh, she doesn't care what happens to you anymore. <laughs> Listen, I will admit yeah. that very often with my characters, I think about, in the back of my mind, I think about how can I get myself out of a sticky situation leaving the party behind if if push comes to shove. I'm, I'm familiar with this kind of gameplay but i only think uh, about it i just think about it in the back of my mind oh well what, what, yeah what? you could call it the uh the marquee the marquee strategy alex you know you said <laughs> we just got the marcia strategy yeah and we've we also know someone who has a marquee strategy uh, <laughs> uh yeah i was gonna say you're kind of the opposite like jay, jay is the most that's the thing you don't have garris here the most self-sacrificing character like 
most play play whose motive is like I'll just go and fight to the death. He would have already to run the other win. direction to distract them. Just <laughs> gone off and they're like over here. Yeah. Oh yeah. Garrus would stand up and be like, I maybe sometime. <laughs> yeah. I, I was gonna say no, Garrus, um he because yeah, Ben in in uh in Spelljammer, First Fall did save the party. Mm-hmm. In Dark Sun, Benvo should have saved the party statistically from the <laughs> yeah. of all things. So as we know, it, if he did that strategy yeah. now, it's basically a 50-50 chance that either he kills all of them yeah. or dies rather yeah. pathetically. Ev- everyone dies, yeah. And then and then Ben and then Garrus killed the golem, the salt golem. I, he basically roped himself to it in the water as it was melting, stabbing it while it tried to punch him. And then he also was your distraction while you fought the Masterial the first time. Uh, I don't think he did very much damage, if we're honest. I think he mostly ran around screaming with slightly better AC than the rest of you. But, yeah. Uh, that is that is Jay's record of sacrificing himself for the party. Uh, whereas, what's Tom, what would you say Kent's record of sacrificing himself for the party is? Nil. <laughs> yeah. ran away. I mean, in fairness, the intention was that he would go invisible and then if there was anyone that, you know, got left bleeding out, he could tend to them. But that wasn't what happened. That, well, what happened was everyone was left bleeding out. <laughs> well, no, they, they and, all got uh, insta well, Stiv was, Stiv was, Stiv. No, no, Stiv, Stiv didn't. You saved Stiv. You popped up and, like, got Stiv back up. Yeah, the most, Im- the most important person to save. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, we take the provocative action yeah. of doing nothing. Yeah. Yeah. We wait. No, you do that. And... They head off into the sunset. Ha-ha. Ha-ha. Mm. Too sneaky. Phew. It's a good thing no one listened to Alex. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, reappear yeah. from the shadows, but I do it, like, right behind Zedric, just to give... just to shit him up. <laughs> <laughs> Zedric goes into the fire. I start screaming Zedric after them. Fire, That's right. right. Walk away. Walk away. <laughs> One day we all wish we had listened to Alex. That's yeah. like AC. That's like AC seven, Tom. You get you got AC better than seven, I assume, Ken. Uh, as he like releases an arrow as we pop up behind him. I, have, <laughs> I actually have exactly AC seven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is going to be like one d six minus one. Uh, it 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 smacks you in the face. But like it's at an angle and the tip breaks. <laughs> wow. And so you don't take any damage, but you are hit like just below your eye by an arrow. He hits you with the bowstring. Bonk. And yeah, Z- Zedric, in the voice of the late Norm MacDonald, says, I'm not one for joke, kids. <sighs> We're so close. So. We can we can see Bollock from here. Did we do rations tonight? Yep. Yeah, we did. Mm, yes, because it's Alex's role, so he did his water. I don't know if he did rations. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I definitely did didn't do rations. It, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, do rations then. Well, no, I, I, think I, you, I, I did water, it all Alex. If you rolled water, I will have done rations as well. Yeah. yeah. He rolled water, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So next day uh, is beach daytime. Uh-huh. I have a great new dwarven drive for you guys. Finish that that bridge they were planning on making across the Silt Sea. Yeah. Oh, god damn it. The north, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is a, this is the first date I've checked. This is a different table. This is my road table. No. You, get, you gave me the reason. The road table was giving you like a cat and a woman who now lives. Well, it's a giving you good stuff. Be and a bullet. And yeah, well, don't don't bury the lead here. <laughs> That bullet somewhere on that table. <laughs> the road table's the best table. Uh, gives you friends. You do actually have a little ghost cat with you, don't you? Because you've got Kent with you. Yeah, oh yeah. And he's basically taking ownership of ghost it. Ghost cat. Ghost cat. Perhaps the secret of the sun is known by the ghost cat. That is possible. But yeah. like these. Gargi and Bentusi, though you joined later, you know, you, you wanderers in the desert joined later, you've now come to see that this weird glowing blob that sometimes is near the party is in fact a um, a weird see-through cat. It's like a mammal, quite rare, 
uh, yeah, uh, DTEM from U Beach. Four. Four. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, you, uh, Marcy will spot as she's scouting, uh, there's a herd of wild Erdlu nearby. They're alert, they're looking around, but they're, they're just grazing um, on some of the kind of rock, rocky shrubs. Uh, the what rest of the party an... member is like a couple hundred feet behind. What is an Erdlu? <laughs> Marcia screams out loud, trying to get people's attention. Is they the big old I mean, ostrich boys? What's... Oh, wait, what was that? Yeah, thing? they're they're the small ostrich thing. There's the oh, okay. um, the uh, what's it called? Erd Lake, Erd Look, something like that. The one that Alex briefly had and then died. Yeah. They are flightless featherless birds, weighing as much as 200 pounds, standing up to seven feet tall, razor sharp, four toed feet, run at great speeds, massive bodies, pair of useless wings. Attached to their yellow snake like le necks are small round heads with huge wedge shaped beaks. Well, they don't sound like small ostriches. Massive bodies. They sound <laughs> small as compared to the bigger versions of these ones. <laughs> the Ur the Erdland is like 11 feet tall, so it's not. Uh, yeah, Erdlu eggs are popular food. If eaten raw, they can even substitute for water for periods of up to one week. How do they feel yeah, about, was... you know, interlopers stealing their eggs? Territorial? Um, find out. <laughs> um, um, yeah, I was thinking about hunting one, but then you mentioned that they have massive bodies and talons, and I was like, well... <laughs> They're tameable. Know, that's... Like, this is what Alex is, this is what Alex's old uh, druid was up really yeah. good at. Well, yeah, I don't we did, have We don't even skills. need a druid for that, though, because... We have two different priests, and animal friendship is just a first old spell. So we just follow them around for a day, then tomorrow, just like make friends with like six of them and drag them off to. I don't think animal friendship works if you're intending to sell them. I just realised the flaw in that plan. Um... <laughs> it's a bit of a it's a bit of a subterfuge reason to make friends with something, isn't it? Yeah. It, it specifically says something about like if your intention is to like eat it, it doesn't. Work. I don't know about. If the caster has ulterior motives, the animal always sen senses them. E.g., the caster yeah. says to eat the animal, send it ahead to set off traps. You can tell what kind of things Gary was dealing with. <laughs> but I cast animal friend for it. I would I'm your friend. Your friend is sheep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this this is what made Gygax lose faith in humanity. He's like, I have a friendship spell I give you guys, and you're all using it. Like duplicitously. Um, yeah, I mean, you can treat them as pets. For instance, uh, typical tasks those taught to a dog or so. So, if your intent was to treat them as pets of some form, that would not count as a negative motive. If yeah, I don't think our intention. Them, yeah, I don't think our intention is ever to treat it as a pet. Right? It, it would either be to try and herd them to Balak, to sell, yeah. or. To or to hunt them. I, I mean, don't, there I don't is see... there is charm mammal at the second level, but I I think that's, well, that's not a mammal. little bit less effective. Oh, they're not mammals, are they? But does is the intention that that would work on an animal, or, or does it is the specific intention that it only works on some animals? Uh, when you say that the, there's a herd, like what are we talking about here? I'm talking about like a big collection. I think like thirty. There's like thirty. What manner um, of sound do they make going? <laughs> what kind of sound? Uh, what's it, what's an ostrich? I don't even know what an ostrich sound is. It's like. Bah! Bah! <laughs> <laughs> okay, since I'm ahead of the party, I'm going to make an executive decision. I am going to, <clears throat> um, I'm going to take off this heavy ass pack that I'm carrying and just set it on the ground. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I am going to crouch, you know, the, the universal sign of uh, sneaking. I'm going to crouch walk forward. <laughs> uh, I'm going to get within bow range and I am going to down one of these creatures in one shot. Wow. And hopefully they don't all turn at me so and start courageous. running. <laughs> Otherwise, I will run away. Bravely. Bra yes, bravely. What? Yeah, you're. Are you? Are you sixty-five for your normal wilderness sneak? 
as your hide and shadow. Uh, no, move silently, not hide and shadow. Move silently is easy. Move silently. I'm very good at moving silently. Crikey. Yeah. Crikey. Okay. Yeah. And if I can get within range, which would be, I mean, I don't know how close I can get my <clears throat> my close range. Wait, if you're close range, does that give you a plus a bonus to the to hit? I think so. No, it's just a, a, a penalty for medium and long. Okay. But yeah, it's yeah getting, to be close. getting mixed up. Um, with, with if, you're sp- no, if you're no, if you're if you're if you're if you're special if you're specialized and you're at point blank, you get some bonuses. But you're not yeah. specialized because you're not a fighter. So you can't be my range is uh, five, ten, fifteen. So that's like that's fifty, hundred, hundred fifty. Feet, or is this yeah, yards? Right. Oh, yard, yards outside, outside, outside. So it's yards. All right, um, so I want to get weird. fifty yards. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I want to get fifty yards if yep. I can, and then uh, yeah, see if I can get an actual, honest to god rogue, sorry thief sneak attack. You... Yeah, can you sneak? Attack no, you can't. It's not a melee weapon. <laughs> no, 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 you can't. You can't, you can't sneak attack with a bow. It's a backstab. You can't. Nope. Maybe if you use your bow to shoot a knife, it'll be a backstab. <laughs> okay, I load it with a knife. I don't know what the terms are. Okay, so I, I can't get. What you're saying is I can't get any bonus damage with a bow. You can't get. No, that's right. No, that's right. That is okay. Right. Something that's tells me that there is no way I can take down one of these creatures uh, in one round. Though I do get two shots in one round, so maybe. You do. Just roll max damage. Yep. Yeah, just roll um, damage. How hard can it be? And well, I was going to say because uh, you are shooting from surprise, don't you? I think you might get a uh, to hit bonus. Isn't it plus plus two? Um, and if you're defender doing defender surprised back, is plus one. Plus one. Uh, defender surprised is plus one. I yeah. All right, so I mean, if it's look- a rear attack, then I think it's cumulative. I think it could you could get plus three if you're coming up behind it. So, well, I suppose that's up. That's your call. I don't. I will try. But uh... yeah, no. If if that's what you want to do, that's fine. You are a wilderness scout. Like you're not like a you're not a city burglar being like. By the way, can I position myself perfectly for this? So I'll allow it. That's fine. Take plus three. All right, then that is cumulative all put together. I'll be rolling with a plus five. He's going to roll a one. Ha! Not ha! Time. He hits. All right, here's the one. He sa- he here's, says, here's where the ha-ha. one happens. <laughs> he, uh, he shouts out, ha ha. As he does minus this. one. <laughs> yeah. Here's where. Yeah, oh, there we go. Yep. <laughs> As I predicted. You get, you, you get one more shot, so. Oh. Uh, yeah, that's. I don't. I think it's got better than AC ten. Uh, so would that be AC yeah. nine? Because I have Thaco nineteen. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. That is a miss. Okay. Um, well, maybe, I sure showed let's that bird. Let's make a mark. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, you'll become. Marcy was incredibly pleased that. Um, yeah. They. Uh, uh, that they don't all kind of turn around as one. What? What on your initiative? What do you do? What's your declar- um, initiative declaration? Are they? Does it? Do they seem spooked like they're running away, or are they running towards me? Uh, you haven't seen them react yet. They are. They know you're there. Oh boy, boy ski, boy They're they're, uh, they're fifty yards away. I will. Yeah. I will take two more shots trying to get this bird mm. down or whatever it is this yep. thing uh, and hope that they the whole herd doesn't charge this way yep okay uh roll your initiative d10 this one you're in. everyone else is too far away so <clears throat> beat my three i got uh, it yep that's so yeah uh, in that case their morale breaks they start scattering they are shocked they, they don't really understand where the firing has come from take your shots Ooh. Ooh. There's a there's a redo of the last time. Yeah. Three so damage yeah, now. Four damage net. Uh, Come on. So four damage net because you Hey. Yeah. All right. 
<coughs> seven damage. So yeah, um, it is not done. It is limping though and bleeding badly as there is arrows sticking out of its large rump. Um, if I start, I suppose I took two shots. That means I can't move, right? Yep. Okay. I think it's the <clears throat> movement reduces Roth by one or something like that. All right. Uh, if they're running away from me, I suppose I will attempt to run forward to, to, I don't know how fast they are. So I'll just see if I can keep up with it and get another shot off. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's slightly slowed by being hit, but, uh, Oh, where? What is it? It's movement. You do, it's. I mean, it's naturally quicker than you. It's probably going slightly slower than it would normally because it's now. But yeah, okay then. Let's. Um, okay, so it's it's quick. So it's now beyond up. my short range. Um, not. I mean, not if you move because then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it, it depends what it's doing. Oh wait, it might be. Okay, yeah, you get to fire first. You fire at the top of the round before it's moved properly. So. I, it'll move after. Nope. Uh, I think it's going to get away. Okay, let's check. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, in, uh, they, they start to try to regather themselves, and uh, the wounded one will actually uh, be coming towards you now. Um, so, look on the bright side. It's going to be able to attack you with its natural weapons, because it, it, it's quick enough to get to <laughs> get towards you. It turns around and just charges at you after you miss. The the herd and is coming towards me? or No, the individual. The others are gathering slightly further away, trying to, like, gather themselves. Um, I'm going to hit... Um, yeah, that's going to be AC1 and AC minuses. So, it, it's pecking and clawing you. Not very effectively. <laughs> Two damage. Hey, why don't you just yep. let me eat you? <laughs> Yeah, at this point, I, sh I should say at this point because everyone else is going like at uh, prob like at a march rate of like thirty feet um, a minute or something, or like sixty, fifty no feet a minute. Happening. They're, they're they're slowly catching up. You probably can hear noise off a hundred feet away or something, or two hundred feet away. I don't think you'll be able to see it because obviously Marcia went off the road. You'll be like, or off the path. You'll be like, what's going on? Um, great. Uh, okay, Marcia, what's your action for the round? Well, everyone else slowly catches up. Uh, so, what's the what's the situation with um, using my bow? There is in a, a wounded close range. Like, do I have to worry mm, about? I don't. Think... Well, uh, yeah, I don't think you can, can you? Because you can't uh, bend enough. You can't stretch enough. You could, I guess, you could move, take an opportunity attack, and create range. Uh. Or you can switch to, switch to a melee. Yeah, I'm going to have to pull out my short sword. Mm -hmm. So we'll drop the bow. Okay. Beat my two. It's attacking on a three. You're attacking on a three. Ugh. It's attacking first. Um, Those both miss. The better one... I say that. The better one will hit AC9. Which you're going to have leather on, so it's going to be AC6 yeah. or something, isn't it? I've got four, so I've got yeah. insane dexterity. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you backflip out of the way and then try to stab it back. Uh, so I'm not as good with the sword. Mm -hmm. I'm very not good with the sword. <laughs> you miss. Okay. Don't worry, you, you guys will catch this battle yeah. will still be going on when you slowly walk up to us. I was going to say they they are, they are probably not that far in terms of a couple hundred feet. It's never like you know, they're they're probably at like a hundred feet away at this point. They might might see, be able to see yeah. some kind of scuffle. You see me slap fighting an uh, oversized yeah. chicken. Yeah. So what, what do people do? What do people do? You see the slap fight? What do you do? Stand and laugh. Forward with his bow. Yeah. Kent moves to get into range. Gargi. Bentusi said he was laughing. Uh, uh, is that Tom? No, Owen. Owen. Yeah, Owen, I think your cable, something might have happened to your mic cable. I've just like turned him to zero for now. Um, 
let me know when he's back and I'll sign him back up just so it's not in the stream. Okay, I think it's... Oh. <laughs> no, it's just died. Headset's exploded. Welcome to Dark Sun. Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to have a nice rotisserie this evening. Have, have they invented rotisserie on Dark Sun? Yeah, rotisserie is like one of the oldest. Is the rotisserie just a stick? Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> just... one of the oldest forms of cooking there is, isn't there? Uh, no. Hello, we can, can hear you. Okay? Yeah, it's yeah. good. Right. Maybe, maybe that's how bad things are on Dark Sun that we just forgot. Rotisserie. <laughs> they can't even put a rod through <laughs> some meat and um, turn it. <laughs> Yeah, Kent runs forward with his bow, to with the view of shooting at this. I time. heard that much. Uh, Bentusi and Gargi, Bentusi and Gargi. Um, uh, it's come as unacceptable, aren't I? Um, I will. <laughs> you don't have to. Don't get... Yeah, I'll try and shimmer in half. So you're going to charge as well. Yeah, great. Yeah. So you'll be both be spending your movement getting into range, basically, won't you? And Gargi. Yeah, yeah. Gaki doesn't want to charge. Um, is this? It's literally just fighting an oversized chicken. It's pretty <laughs> oversized. I yell out, "Shoot her! Shoot her!" I guess is is is, is there anybody in melee with it at the moment? Yeah, yeah me, Marcia. Uh, yeah, yes, well, Marcia. Then I'm, then I'm not gonna shoot it, am I? I'm ineffectively waggling a sword at it. Is it was there a chance to hit him if he's maybe I'll go melee then I'll just go in with my sing, mm, singing. Sword. Yeah. Yeah, I think Garky's just. So you're also yeah, charge to engage this one. Garky's Garky's just going to Okay, you you look after. Stuff. Yes, Zed Zedric can jump off and run forward as well if you want. I guess. <laughs> um, you do that. Uh, yeah, great. If you, if that's what you want him to do anyway, he can also guard the thing. Uh, beat my nine, um, let's say, Kent, Tom, you roll the initiative. Dice cam Eight. sponsored by Budweiser. Eight. You, yeah, you just beat them. In that case, Marcia, because it, you're both in the same speed, you go first. All right. This one's going to be the lucky one. <clears throat> I retract my previous statement. <laughs> lucky for the early. Um, I guess, uh, yeah, people spend their time. Bentusi, Zedric, and uh, Kent spend their time getting into close combat. And it will attack you with its two naturals. Oh. Which are both going to hit. That's a bit better. Whew. Seven damage. So you've taken nine damage from this creature pecking you and clawing you. Uh, the others are beginning to herd back around and get, and they haven't kind of charged, but they are beginning to squawk aggressively. Next. <laughs> Maybe we beat a Doggy, where's that animal friendship guys. when you hit? How, clo how close is the party to me now? Are they up with the creature, or are they still... That you've, got, you've, got, you've, got, you've got three with you. You had three people run up to you next to you. Gargi stayed back with the uh, Kanks. Okay, can I do a fighting withdrawal just so that i'm not directly you can do you can do the full cover thing yeah that's fine in it's in its um, uh, claw range because uh yeah. yeah ouch yeah yeah i guess uh ben Tusi, kent and zedrick are you wanting to attack this creature i, I mean my, kent, it is if, your if the others are amassing, attacking i twice, suggest kent. we fight we all fighting withdrawal like we just we just get Mar marcia out of there and, and just back up we, yeah, that seems sensible to me. Yeah, we don't want this whole herd coming at us. It's almost dead. 
yeah, but like if we kill it and we start dragging it away and the others decide to attack us. Make yourself look as big as Gargis, possible. You have, as, do, you... <laughs> Gargis, do you have any advice from 100 feet away? No. No. <laughs> watching in... I'm not sure what emotion. Cast a spell. The, a magic thing that solves the problem. Do you want me to summon an elemental to <laughs> do this for you? Uh, yes, please. Okay, that'll take me about four months. <laughs> no. I'll start I'll start casting Dust Devil. <laughs> yeah, just have loads of Dust Devils to do this for you. Yeah, but yeah. it's good. Uh, no, <laughs> okay, I mean, you can... You... Yeah. Oh, I mean, I'll have to walk up with no, it. I'll you start can, you walking can, up can, as I cast can, Dust yeah. <laughs> Well, we're going to be withdrawing yeah. towards Okay, I guess everyone is... Okay. Yeah. Um, what is the... Okay, movement in combat. Let's double check this. Uh, what you can do in one round, movement in combat, retreat, withdrawing, you move up to a third your normal movement rate and back away. Um, you can still, uh, I think, you can still attack while withdrawing, can you not? I don't know. Not as far as I, not, yeah, you can. Not, not, that's yeah. not how, oh, is, is that? No. Nope. Yeah, withdrawing. When withdrawing, when making withdrawal, you can carefully back away. Who can choose to follow? Basically, you can shift a third of your movement, but they can follow. It's not like a free square. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, you can attack while you're doing this. If you're literally fighting withdrawal, you can keep fighting if you want. It's up to you. Right as well. I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Ben two C beat my six. Then we'll. Okay. Uh, I have drawn. Yep. Okay, so singing sticks go at two, don't they, Tom? The first attack is at two. That is correct. Because you're on your off round here. You're, you're on your own round, so yeah. I think your speed is two on singing sticks, isn't it? That is correct. Uh, yeah, okay. So So you go first. Yeah, so it's deep. He gets, he gets his rhythm stick out. Yep. Yeah. I'm going to hit you with my rhythm stick. All right, D20 plus one. Yep. Uh, six, so 15 plus 1, 16. And my Thacko's 18, so I hit AC2. I AC3? Yeah, hit AC2. Yeah, you definitely hit. Yeah, yeah. Roll down. So. Yes. So they're medium, are they? These creatures, and they're not large. Mm, they might be large. Uh, they are medium. They're not. They're 7 feet tall, yeah. So they are medium. So D6 plus 2 damage. Five damage. So, yeah, three, that is enough. So yeah, yes. you actually have a fighter turn up, Marcia, and you're showing how it's done <clears throat> as it just smashes this creature's skull in. Yeah, I just <laughs> uppercut with the singing stick, just under the beak. Ding. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, I guess Bentusi and Marcia have free. free uh, Gargi is uh, starting to cast as he kind of. As I guess Cedric uh, can also she will shield Marcia as Marcia is retreating wounded, but yeah, maybe it depends uh, if any, you can if drag you, drag this thing away by the neck. If, <laughs> if Marcia's really attached to this rotisserie, we don't think it will make the herd chase us. Well, I it, now I need to I need to run rush forward now and grab my bow in the backpack that I dropped. Well, I suppose I drop. I suppose I drop the so, backpack. Yeah, back. that the, the, back the backpack is forward, so it's probably behind, behind us. us now. Yeah, but I do want to grab my bow. Yeah, Mar Marcia can. Yeah, you've moved like twenty or something. So, uh, because that's the slowest speed of the group, or you would have been that. So yeah, you can change your your action rather than attacking or anything. You can run forward and get it, and then probably run back actually because you can just turn to like a half move for you unencumbered is sixty, isn't it? So yeah, that's yeah. fine. You can just I'll do be that like, instead okay, we else. can we can go now. We I got what we came for. <laughs> Num nums, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the dragon of tear arrives. Mm, num nums for dinner. <laughs> uh, great. Okay. Uh, yeah, <laughs> the herd. Wants, yeah, uh, I guess especially once the dust devil is out, because the herd will pro possibly start squawking towards you, and then the dust devil will arrive. So, <laughs> yeah, the, the herd will leave you as you remove this one. Um, well, Ben Tusi's dra dra dragging it away. <laughs> Uh, should we do 
night time as if we do tomorrow too i say that because then you're at the edge of the square so i don't have to remember the percentage of the square you're through <laughs> uh, yeah sure cool. so, so your water stuff please it... yeah alex so, you do that yeah, Tom, yeah, you're yeah, in the encounter uh, yeah okay encounter is a six Heat protected. Alex is heat protected. And find water also succeeds. So it's three point five. So you gain one dose of water, like one like eight well, litres or eight sorry, yeah, eight litres. Gain a, a half eight pint, not eight litres. Eight sorry, a gallon. I you yeah, get eight yeah. pints. So, sorry, yeah. so I don't know why I said eight litres. Water is reduced um, by yeah. three point five instead of five. Yeah. 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 Cool. We're yep. way under Great. our weight limit okay. now, as well, having chomped through food and water and everything. So, you do, however, have rotisserie chicken. Oh yeah, that's true. Which How much is, is that while we're at it? You, you've you've got like a you've got like probably a, a hundred pounds of meat there. Uh, um, Erd. Oh god, I can't spell shit. Erdlu. Erdlu. E R D L U. Yeah, one hundred. You reckon? Do you have space for? I mean, I you yeah, can yeah, just yeah, literally yeah. like right, easily, easily. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Like, I guess you just can eat from that to start with. Like, it's going to add how many rations is going to add in terms of standard? It's going to add thirty-three rations. So you'll have, you'll eat those rations first, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Uh... I guess you could try. You could put. You could partially smoke them, but if you're moving, you can't fully smoke them. Obviously, you don't. Yeah. You can't hang them and then smoke them. Uh, so, sorry, how many you rations? You could partially is smoke that them. 33. 33. Yeah, okay, so that each one is yeah, yeah. three pounds. Okay, got it. So, um, yeah, okay, so. Yeah. So we're going to eat five of those. 28. 28. Rations, which means that that is now 68. Or pounds. There you go. Right. Yeah. Yeah, we easily got enough to carry it. I should say that was actually probably quite, 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 quite valuable food to find there, probably from uh, Marcia. Yeah. Depending on the length of your journey. And plus, when uh, you get okay. the final blow, I get some XP, I suppose. You will, because you'll fight. That's the best way for your party to have it work. That will be your bonus. Everyone has got bonus XP this time. Everyone has got bonus XP on a wilderness session as well. Uh, okay, Ben Tusi, do you want to roll? We'll do this last day, um, just so that I know where we are. Ben Tusi, do you want to roll the encounter? It's going to roll a one and it's going to be a boulat. Yeah, okay, six. great. <laughs> and then uh, water and encounter from Gargi, please. Yeah. Heat protection succeeds. Uh, uh, find water fails by a lot. And I rolled a two on the encounter. Yep, that's fine. There we go. And it's it's a weird one actually because Kent is a single classer, so you'll actually get ninety XP for that because it'd be three HD times class, won't it? Three times ten times three. Cool. Nice. Okay. You are next time. Next time you'll be reaching the main road, which is safer. Like the main road Incredible. is obviously safer than the um, the wilderness for travelling. So yeah. Nice. Next time we're almost we'll there. Be in Barlick. No, yeah. Nice. That's good. Uh, yeah. Logistics matter, and um, so does I. I guess uh, trading. You traded. That was your first. Ever, was that your first ever actual trading? I think it was. It was. Yeah. Might have been. Yeah. Yeah, we yeah. were ambassadors. Someone needs to create. A, someone needs to have a trade on their tree. Yeah, you need to do. You, someone needs to be a trader for your actual trading stuff in Barlick. Partly for the XP and partly because you actually want the um, probably the skills and stuff. Yeah. So. I don't know if anyone actually has a trade on the tree at the moment. I know there were some spare slots on people's trees. I, uh, yeah, I've, I've not, I've only got Kent at the moment. I'm halfway through doing another one, but I'll roll up another yep. character. And I'll yeah. Probably, if I get the we will for it, need I'll to confirm when we're next on, but we'll, yeah. I think we'll probably do uh, one or two sessions more of this before we uh, have a time back, probably in on the Rock of Brawl, I think was what we were talking about. Mm -hmm. um, What's just the Rock of so, Brawl? Yeah. Spelljammer. Spelljammer. Hmm. And they've just got their first access. They've got access to a spaceship. The fir their first adventure, they did not. They they had to do things like longshore work and walking around guarding um, trade deliveries. Yeah, and instead, also fighting had, we, had access, uh, we had access to space dysentery yeah. instead. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Space cholera. And uh, yeah, they were, yeah they actually had they had to check every day if they got space cholera. Uh, but now they have like a little um, star sail to go around on to go and do go fishing and go salvaging and things like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that'd be good. Uh, yeah, because Simon didn't play in that. We'll, we'll talk about it um, off the stream, obviously, Simon. But yeah. Uh, cool. Uh, so. Yeah. Okay. Uh, as I say, we'll have to confirm updates because it's been a tough month because of people. I was traveling and other people have had like a lot of busy stuff. So, um, but we will, yeah, we'll sort that out soon. Anyway, thanks for that. Uh, I will. Tom, we've got that thing where it's blacked out my end stream. Could you kill the stream? I will kill <laughs> the stream. I will sort Goodbye, it out everyone. This... <laughs> yeah. Goodbye.